Massachusetts. It'll be the near sideline inbound for the Minutemen in white, the Fordham Rams in their road maroons. Miles, these Minutemen are such good rebounders. They out-rebound opponents by 5.1 per game. The Rams are going to need to be physical. Let's see how they fare. So just about 10 seconds in, here's the big guy at the top of the circle, Josh Cohen, fakes the handoff and cuts inside. Here's the righty floater off the right side of the window and down. A quick 2-0 start for the Minutemen at home, just 20 seconds in. Won't be the first time you hear that name from the home announcer, Josh Cohen. A big man and a big part, literally, of this team. Jameer Tripp, the freshman, kicks it high post. Here's Kyle Rose, hesitates, fakes left, cuts right. At the top of the circle, back to the basket, spins around on the smaller guard in Diggins and finds Jameer Tripp. Trip over to Charlton on the lefty slot. Six seconds to shoot. Here's Antrell Charlton, fades away from the lefty elbow, strong off the right side of the iron, and Matt Cross corrals the rebound for the Minutemen in white. They lead 2-0, pushing left to right with the basketball. Here's the point guard, Curry, Crosses over and kicks it down low for Cohen on the left block. Swings it back up top for Cross. The triple, no good. Strong off the right side. And Abdu Sambila rips away his first board of the day. It's still 2-0 UMass. One minute in here from Amherst, Massachusetts. It's Jameer Tripp. Dribble drive the freshman. Big body turns around on the right block. Swings it out left corner. Antrell Charlton steps into the three. In and out. But Ramad Dean pokes it free. Also a little bit of contact from Matt Cross. But it is a 2-2 ball game, and Curry to push up in the whites, moving left to right. I don't know if Dean had any idea he was about to score there. He was just going for the rebound. He knocked it in. Here's Cohen back to the basket, right side mid post on Jameer Tripp. Picks up his dribble and finds Curry outside on the left arc. Curry, dribble drive, pull up from 15, and hands off for the curling Josh Cohen now. Cohen back to the basket, left side mid post. They'll find Diggins. Diggins steps into the three, and he's no good. Off the right side of the iron, Rose, the rebound. Ahead to Charlton, and the baseball pass is recovered. Here's Jameer Tripp. Dribble drive from the left side, and he gets the righty lay to fall. Ford in the lead, 4-2, to two, two minutes in. The 6'6 freshman, I always say he's so physical, dares that athleticism in the paint. Jalen Curry on the right arc, swings it up top for Matt Cross. Cross over to Jingay. Jingay, the big guard, dumps it down low for Cohen, the righty. Turn around. No good this time on the right. He turned around. Hook strong off the heel. And Abdu picks up a second rebound. It's 4-2. to two. Rams on top with the basketball in their road maroons. Kyle Rose, righty slot three, steps into it and bangs it. Right out the gate, Kyle Rose picks up right where he left off. It's 7-2. Rams on top. Rose, 7 of 11 from three last time out. It raised his percentage from 39 to 41. Diggins, right arc three. He pops it, no good. Strong off the heel, and Abdu Simbila quickly three rebounds. And ahead to Jameer Tripp on the right arc. Dribble drive, Jameer Tripp in transition. No good. The putback once again short. Ramad Dean couldn't handle it. And Josh Cohen wraps up the possession for the Minutemen. It's 7-2 for the on top. Here's Jalen Curry outside on the left wing for the UMass Minutemen in white. Dribble drive center of the paint. Jumps it down low for Josh Cohen. Cohen rises and draws the contact. So two shots coming for the senior forward. Six foot ten Josh Cohen. Seven to two. The Fordham Rams lead on the road here inside the Mullen Center against a really solid UMass team, Chris. The referee explaining the call there to head coach Keith Ergo. Ergo, of course, always advocating for his guys. The referee's explanation was that Cohen had established himself down there in the paint. Tambilla had not. And even though Abdu did what the Fordham coaching staff loves. Short off the iron there. So Cohen misses and the lead holds for the Fordham Rams at 7-2 here three minutes in. Tambilla did what the coaching staff loves, but regardless, too much contact on the chest. It was a foul. So Cohen stands at the free throw line. He was a standout at St. Francis before getting picked up by famous head coach Frank Martin. He's pure on the second free throw there. So UMass back within four here. It's seven to three. Fordham on top here, 16-49 and ticking first half. Antrell Charlton to walk it up now, moving right to left in the road maroons. Charlton outside on the left wing, hands off for the curling Kyle Rose. 15 to shoot. He'll dump it down low. Abdu rises and finishes through the contact. An and one opportunity here for Abdu Simbila. Jaden Jinge, the freshman, the guilty party late on the rotation. It's nine to three. The Fordham Rams are on top, and Abdus and Bila heads to the free throw line for one with 16-37 in the first half. Miles, let's talk about how Timbilla created that bucket for himself. He's physical down low. This time he established position, 
and a defender bounces off of him to the ground. He jumps up in the air with his hands up, gets the rock, and finishes. Simbila well short off the front of the iron there. Still 9-3, to three. the Fordham Rams on top at UMass. Scoreless the last 247 from the field, that is. They had that one free throw out of Cohen, but Cohen now stands at the top of the circle. 16-21 first half. Dribble drive for Jalen Curry. He finds his man in cross. Cross to the top of the circle for Jinge. And Jinge rattles around and out on the mid-range jumper. Antrell Charlton, the rebound, ahead to the freshman Jameer Tripp. Tripp in transition, rises out of control with the righty lay. Too strong there, UMass the rebound. Here's Curry, transition, pull up from 15. Short there off the front of the iron. Antrell Charlton, the free board. Fordham wraps up a quick possession. They lead 9-3, 15-53 in the first half. Here's Antrell Charlton, standing dribble on the right arc, picks it up and dishes Simbila, top of the circle. Over to Kyle Rose, now Rose. Pulls back the dribble, moving right to left, pulls from 15 now, and he fades away and hits the jumper. Not an ounce of rim there. It's 11-3 now, and Kyle Rose is a big part of it. He's establishing himself as someone who can create his own shot, and that's what the Rams have needed all season. Miles, look at Kyle Rose, the number one option. Diggins swings it over left arc. Here's Jingay. Jingay the handoff for the big man at the top of the circle, Josh Cohen. Cohen angles to the right perimeter and hands off for another guy in Diggins. Diggins angles to the right corner, dribble drive the baseline, and he stepped out of bounds with the right foot. Fordham forces another turnover. It's an 11 to 1, Fordham 1 here. 15 13 to play in our first half. That'll take us to immediate timeout, but it's all Rams here on the road. 11 to 3, they lead. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to Fordham Men's Basketball on WFUV Sports. What's up, everyone? I'm Julia Moss one of the hosts of WFUV's Women's Sports Podcast, All In. Join us each week as we break down everything from the WNBA, women's collegiate sports, the NWSL, and so much more. We're also joined by recurring hosts including Maddie Bamonte, Taylor Masetta, Sam Bohr, and Annabelle Watson. All In is a production of WFUV Sports. Eleven to three, the Fordham Rams on top here on the road over the UMass Minutemen, live from Western Massachusetts. I'm Miles Grossman alongside my man Chris Persiani. And Chris, the Fordham Ram defense is nitty gritty and very solid. UMass hasn't gotten a field goal in the last 428 of basketball time, and that defense is why the Fordham Rams are up right now. Yeah, Miles, they went to St. Joe's in Philadelphia and got into a hole early. That was a game where. They're down almost 30 points at one juncture of that game, and they brought it within seven. There was a Ram fight there, but it was too little too late because of the hole they got in early. Well, now they've put the opposition in that position. Miles getting out to an 11-3 to start of their own, and you take a look at how they made it happen. Well, it's Elijah Gray maybe doing something special, telling his high school teammate, Keon Thompson, <laughs> to take a game off with a little load management because... With the Minutemen missing their sophomore guard, even though he fouled out of the last game and only played 27 minutes, 0 of 3 from the floor, Keon Thompson averages almost 10 points a game for the Minutemen and almost th four rebounds, definitely over three assists. He's really important. That is a factor early. The Fordham Rams have taken advantage. And the UMass Minutemen, two key injuries. Keon Thompson, as you said, Chris, and also Robert Davis Jr., the freshman guard, six foot six. Two highly touted names that have worked their way into a regular part of this UMass rotation, both out today. So UMass a little shorthanded here with the basketball coming out of the baseline inbounds is the backup big and Daniel Hank in Stanford. And he fades away from five and hits right there. Brings UMass within six. Now 11 to five, the Fordham Rams control it and a couple substitutions here for Fordham. Jafay Medor walks it up now, moving right to left in the light pink shoes. Hesitates on the left perimeter and kicks it over to Antrell Charlton. Charlton lobs it down low for Simbila and Simbila can't handle the pass. Too strong on Antrell Charlton as it bounces out of play on the offensive baseline of Fordham. Going back to UMass's direction, 11 to five. Fordham the lead, 14-46 first half. Not an assist yet in this game, Miles. These teams are getting one-on-one -on -one buckets to start. It's like the dead ball era, early 2000s in the NBA. 
<laughs> Here's Jaden Jinge, top of the circle, now swings it over to Hankins Sanford at the top of the circle, back to the basket, hands out for Diggins. Diggins curls around and kicks it back for Sanford. Sanford steps into it from 15, rattles it in and out there. Josh Rivera snatches up the rebound, and Fordham now moving right to left. The possession in the lead, they got a whistle on the floor here. And looks like Jaden Jinge, the guilty party on the floor. Frank Martin looks off in disgust here, but we'll have the stoppage with 14.48 to play in the first half. 11 to five, Fordham the lead and the basketball. It'll be the baseline inbound in the offensive set. Josh Rivera, the trigger man, coming out of the foul. That call was on Hankins Sanford. Miles, his first of the game, the only other Minuteman with a foul. Doesn't matter, they've only got one. It's in Jinge, you're right. <laughs> Here's Kyle Rose outside on the right arc, two-hand overhead pass over to Josh Rivera. Rivera dumps it down low for Charlton, and Charlton immediately pushes off with the right arm, fully extended, looking for space before he stepped into the jumper, but turns it right back over with 14.08 to play in our first half. It is 11-5. Fordham still an early lead in a defensive struggle. And Charles Charlton is really good, Miles, and he's that Swiss Army knife these Rams need, but he fouled out last time out, had only two assists to his four turnovers. They need a bounce back effort today. Matt Cross dumps it down low for the cutter and Jalen Curry. We got a foul on the floor. Jalen Curry's aggression will pay off there. So it'll be the baseline inbound now for the Minutemen in their home whites. 13-56 in the first half. Fordham on top, 11-5. UMass basketball. Foul there on Jafe Medor. They said he grabbed the person he was defending, and that was that. Matt Cross catches from the nail and dumps it down low. Gets it back on the right arc. Chest pass out of Matt Cross. Up top now for Curry. Curry hesitates on Kyle Rose. 10 to shoot. Finds Sanford. Sanford on the 15-foot mark. Hesitates. Looking for Matt Cross and finds Diggins. Diggins steps into the triple and cans it from the top of the circle. UMass right back within three there. And we had bodies in the deck. Matt Cross was on the floor away from the ball and now a referee giving a talking due to Abdu Simbila but it is a made bucket UMass within three it's 11 to 8 Fordham on top 13 37 first half yeah Simbila jawing a little bit with Daniel Hank and Stanford he's someone that Frank Martin loves to work with and now on the floor Jalen Curry guilty party on the reach here far too aggressive Jafe Medor able to draw the foul We'll have the freshman, Marquis Worthy, the freshman guard at six foot three out of Anaheim, California. Definitely expect some more time out of him with the injuries of Keon Thompson and Robert Davis. So freshman checks in for the very first time. 13-31 in the first half. Fordham, the lead in the ball. It's 11-8. Here's Josh Rivera back to the basket, left side, mid post. Looking to go to work on Matt Cross. Rises through the contact, and he's short off the front of the iron. But Josh Rivera will trot to the free throw line with 13-23 to play in our first half. A couple opportunities for the sophomore. 11-8, Fordham on top. I've got two for you here, Miles. Firstly, let's talk about how Rivera created that for himself. He was physical inside. He drove in, he backed him down in the paint, and he used his ability to handle the basketball, combined it with his size, and got himself to the free throw line. So Rivera around and no good there. Made contact with the rim on three different occasions, but it does not fall. Abdu Simbila checks off. Yoli Akuovo on for the first time. Here with 13.33 to play in our first half. Still 11-8 coming off the missed free throw out of Josh Rivera. One more coming. That second note on Rivera, Miles, yes, 47% free throw shooter on the season, but versus Davidson, Duquesne, and George Mason, he went 7 of 8, so maybe improving at the right time as he makes the second. Makes the second, salvages something from the trip. It's 12 to 8, Fordham, Jafay Medor, the reach in the backcourt. Marquee Worthy, the freshman guard, draws the contact 70 feet from the basket, and that's one of those that's really going to frustrate Keith Thurgo as Jafay Medor checks off now. Will Richardson on for the very first time, rocking the mask, and this is game one of the Will Richardson mask era. Ramad Dean, it was a little bit of friendly fire. His own teammate bumped him in the face last time out at St. Joe's. So Will Richardson applies the pressure at the top of the key, wearing the mask. Here's Matt Cross, top of the circle, dumps it down low for the big. And Sanford, no good on the righty turnaround, but the offensive rebound here is Worthy. Swings it over to Jingay, dumps it down low for Sanford. And Sanford found from behind on the dribble drive. So he'll head to the free throw line with 13.01 to play, but the aggressive once again pays off for UMass looking like the quicker team on that possession 12 to 8 the Fordham lead 13-01 first half well 
as Hank and Sanford goes to the free throw line, Miles, we can call back to what I mentioned earlier, that head coach Frank Martin absolutely loves this kid. He loves working with him. He loves his work ethic. And he's someone who, even though he's just a sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, was at the University of South Carolina last year. He was a three-star prospect and a top 200 recruit out of high school. Maybe most impressive, though, he was top five out of North Carolina. So Hank and Stanford, good on the second free throw. UMass within two now, 12 to 10. Fordham on top, 12-59 and taking first half. Will Richardson moving right to left in the Maroons. Hesitates on the right side of the perimeter. Two dribbles with the left hand and skips it high post for Kyle Rose. Rose, 15 to shoot, pulls back the dribble on Worthy. At the top of the circle, kicks over to Richardson. Richardson pops the three, and he's nothing but net from the right arc and Will Richards in his first bucket it's a big one 15 to 10 Fordham on top yeah you can't mask that kind of talent Miles here's Hank in Stanford I love it Chris <laughs> kicks it over back to Worthy on the righty slot here's Hank in Stanford catches and finds Diggins on the curl chest pass over to Dejinge Jinge, Jaden Jinge finds Matt Cross. Now it's Josh Cohen on the left elbow. Leans in on Yole, rises and he's no good. Good stand up D there from Yole. Forces a miss out of the veteran in Josh Cohen and Fordham and Jameer Tripp now pushing right to left. 12 0 5 and ticking in our first half. Fordham the lead in the ball, 15 to 10. Kyle Rose steps into it. Top of the key, three and he's got it. Nothing but net once again for Kyle Rose, 18 to 10, the Fordham lead here on the road. No matter which garden he's in, this Rose is gonna bloom, Miles. Cohen steps into it, looking for the answer at the top of the circle, in and out, but the put back down low. Hankins Sanford with the finish off the glass. And UMass back within six, 18 to 12, Fordham the lead. Kyle Rose to walk it up now, some pressure in on Diggins. Diggins now. Draws the double team to Kyle Rose, and he finds Will Richardson. Top of the circle, over to Josh Rivera. Rivera, top of the key now, hands off for the curling Rose and gets it back on the dump off. Ten seconds to shoot, left side. Here's Josh Rivera, dribble drive, rises with the right hand, and he'll draw contact. 11-16 to play in our first half. Josh Rivera headed to the free throw line. They're the lead for the Fordham Rams now, 18-12. And that will take us to our under 12 media timeout here in Amherst, Massachusetts. But the Fordham Rams, a wire to wire lead so far here, nine minutes in. 18 to 12, the lead on the road. But with that, we'll send it back to our Rose Hill studios for a scoreboard update with Isabel Terracini. The one on one scoreboard. Top of the charts, Houston trailing unranked UCF Knights by three, 26 to 29 with a minute and 40 left in the first half. Just about 430 miles north out in Columbus, South Carolina, the battle for the number one spot in the SEC is in full swing as UTK is leading the Gamecocks with a score of 35 to 24 going into the locker room. And just about a two hour drive south, second in the A-10, the Loyola Chicago Ramblers and the Davidson Wildcats are snout to snout with Loyola having a four point lead in the game, 32 to 28. And the number one in the Atlantic 10, Richmond Spiders are at odds with St. Joe's. Live from the Robin Center with Richmond holding the advantage 32 to 24. I'm Isabella Terracini with your one-on-one -on -one scoreboard. Wednesday night hoops here at the Mullen Center in Amherst, Massachusetts. I'm Miles Grossman alongside Chris Persianen and Chris, the Fordham Rams, an 18 to 12 lead here with 11-16 to play in our first half of the Fordham Rams looking to give themselves a chance at that single bye come the Atlantic 10 tournament at Barclays Center next week. And with a win today, they'd be in a good spot for that. And three of three from their field and their last three. They've done it on defense. Really, this has been a spectacular nine minutes. Yeah, Miles, let's take a look at the two stars here in the Mullen Center. Kyle Rose for the Fordham Rams. Eight points on a perfect three of three shooting, two of two from downtown. He's got a rebound. He's got two assists and zero turnovers. You need it done? Kyle Rose has got it. Let's go to the other side. Josh Cohen, three points, one of four shooting, one of two from the free throw line. He's got three rebounds, but... A team low minus 11 in just his seven minutes of play. Not great. 
So Josh Rivera stands at the free throw line and he's good on the first of two, making a 19 to 12 Fordham Ram lead here with 11-16 to play in our first 20 minutes. And the Fordham Rams from the field, awfully efficient, seven of 11 as a team, as opposed to UMass's 4-14 as a squad. As Josh Rivera rattles around and down on the second free throw, make him three of four from the charity stripe today. And as Chris, we've talked about this a lot this year, he's a 47 percenter on the campaign, but he makes it a 20 to 12 Fordham lead here with just over 11 to play in the first half. Yeah, Rivera, the sophomore forward, coming along a little bit from the charity stripe at the right time of the year. Matt Cohen dumps it down low for Matt Cross. Cross back to the basket. Lefty turned around and he gets it to go. Two bounces off the iron and down with 11 flat to play in our first half. UMass back within six, 20 to 14. Ford in the basketball. Here's the freshman at 6'6", six, six, Jameer Tripp. Hands off for the curling Richardson. He'll bounce it up top for Rose. Over to Simbila. Moving it around the arc now. Finds Will Richardson. Richardson over to Tripp with 14 to shoot. Tripp back to the basket on the left perimeter. Spins around on his man. Dribble drive and he kicks it out. Will Richardson right side three and he's short. Off the right side of the iron. Haken Stanford rips free the rebound. 20 to 14. Fordham lead. Here's Jalen Curry looking to go coast to coast. And the high arc and flip off the glass. Falls right there. And UMass back within four. 20 to 16. Fordham 10-18 first half. Jalen Curry may come off the bench for this team, just a freshman, but nine points and six assists and four steals a game at the USA, the FIBA Under-16 Championship. That got the USA a gold medal. Abdu Simbila on the lefty block, the turnaround with the right hand strong. Ramad Dean the rebound, but he stepped out of bounds with the left foot on the baseline. So with 10-01 to play in the first half, it's going back UMass's way for them. Temporarily snatched up the offensive rebound, but could not contain it. Going back the UMass Minutemen's way in white. Moving left to right here at home. And Chris, take a look at this crowd. It's filled out decently, but still pretty empty on this Wednesday night in Western Mass. Well, Miles, I don't know if you can blame them. This team is 19 and 10 and 10 and 7 in conference. This game not uber important. Jalen Curry kicks it over to Cohen, right side mid post. Now up top, back for Jalen Curry. Curry, the point guard, angles his way to the left side perimeter, crosses left to right, pulls up from 18, the long two, strong off the heel. Kyle Rose, the Fordham rebound here, 9.37 and ticking. First half, 20 to 16, the Fordham lead. Kyle Rose splits two defenders at the top of the circle, and he rises with the right hand. He's out of control there. And Josh Cohen, the rebound, pushes up, moving left to right, and hands off for Curry at the top of the key. Curry, the handoff for Worthy, back up top for Cohen. Cohen dumps it down low for Matt Cross, back to the basket on the left block. Cross decides to reset, kicks it up top for Curry. Curry, top of the circle, nine to shoot, dribble drive, swings it over to Worthy. Worthy, left arc three, and a Worthy, well short there. Amdu Simbila corrals the rebound, and ahead to Antrell Charlton. Nine to play in the first half. Here's Antrell Charlton. On the left arc, finds Ramad Dean. Left corner, triple in and out there. And Matt Cross wide open under the basket to corral the miss. 20 to 16, Fordham on top. Here's Jaden Curry with the basketball. Kicks it over to Matt Cross, top of the circle. Matt Cross, turn around, hard of the key. No good on the turnaround, but the put back under the basket. And Josh Cohen through the contact on the second opportunity. And it's six foot ten. Just the sheer physicality of this guy. Surely a problem for the Fordham Rams. An and one opportunity here with 8.39 to play in our first half. 20 to 18, Fordham on top, but Cohen heads to the free throw line. Yeah, Miles, a heavy whistle early in this one. Both teams getting whistled for fouls. It's not just one way here. This streak goes both ways, but the referees being ticky-tack with the calls, and it's a end of game, you know, end of year game. You can't blame them for just trying to have this go right you know it's not a let them play environment it's still an important basketball game even if it's a little more important for Fordham than it is for the Minutemen so Cohen pure on the one of one trip to wrap up the and one UMass within one 20 to 19 Fordham on top back to the basket here's Josh Rivera the turnaround with the right hand doing it all himself from the right side short corner 22 to 19 is the Fordham lead Curry to push up with a burst of speed. He'll swing it over to Diggins on the left side perimeter. Diggins hesitates and finds Cross on the left arc. Cross dumps it down low, and then he got some contact down low. Abdu Simbila hit the deck, and it looks like he will be the one called for the foul. So Yole Akuovo checks on now. Abdu Simbila checks off with 8.05 to play in our first half. 
Fordham still a narrow lead at 22 to 19. Chris, they've led wire to wire to this moment, but now it looks like UMass into the bonus here with 8.05 to play, and Josh Cohen will trot to the line for the one and one at six foot 10. I was gonna say, Miles, that's Fordham's eighth foul of the half. UMass with just five, now maybe a little more of a one-way street, but still, both teams getting called for it. You got Yole Akawovo coming in, because Timbilla's up to two. So Cohen good on the first of two. UMass back within two. 22 to 20, Fordham on top, 8.05 to play in our first half. The six foot 10 St. Francis low major star steps into the free throw and hits it. And UMass to back within a sole point, 22 to 21, 8.05 first half. Yeah, Cohen's up to eight points on two of five shooting. Last time out, eight points, eight rebounds on two of nine shooting. So, you know, somewhat better for him since it's still the first half. Antrell Charlton surges into the offensive set here. 7.55 and tick in first half. Fordham Rams the lead in the ball, 22-21. Here's Josh Rivera back to the basket, and he's looking for positioning, and he shuffled his right foot. A sure travel there with 7.50 to play in our first half. And that turns it right back over to the Minutemen here at home. 22-21, the Fordham Rams on top. But with 7.50 to play in our first half, that's going to take us to another media timeout. This is Fordham Men's Basketball on WFUV Sports. I'm Will Grant. And I'm Chris Percy Einan. And we're two of the hosts for WFUV's very own basketball podcast, Pick and Pod. Tune in weekly for updates and our takes on the latest around the NBA, as well as exclusive insight from our very own Knicks and Nets beat reporters. We'll have you covered on everything from all of the NBA's latest drama we know and love to debating all year long which team will get to lift that golden Larry O'Brien in June. So don't miss a beat from the hardwood on WFUV's Pick and Pod. Neck and neck here at the Mullen Center here in Amherst, Massachusetts. I'm Miles Grossman alongside Chris Persiain in 7.50 to play in our first half. Fordham still hanging on to a narrow lead, 22 to 21 they lead. And Chris, after an awfully efficient start from the field, the Fordham Rams have cooled down a little bit back to 50%, but really the key difference is UMass has heated up a little bit, now up to 35% as a team. And up to 21 points here with 7.50 to play. Not too shabby of an offensive number. Yeah, Miles, I mean, I want to go right to the three-point shooting to add another layer to that discussion you just started. Fordham Rams are three of six from downtown. That's good for them, Miles. They are a team that shoots 32% from three on the season. Their problem, opponents shoot 36.6% from three against the Rams. And UMass right now is one of seven from downtown. Now, the good news there is the Fordham Ram defense is doing a nice job of curtailing Massachusetts's shooting, but the bad news is all they need is for a couple of those to start falling, and this one-point deficit might turn into a lead pretty quick. Absolutely, and take a look at this box score as well. Kyle Rose already up to eight points, three of four from the field, two of two from downtown, and of course, He's making his 138th appearance as a Fordham Ram this evening, Chris, the longest tenured Ram of all time. And in his 137th appearance as a Fordham Ram, he picked up, pardon me here, some, some words from Keith Ergo here trying to get a box score. But he picked up 31 points, the most all time. So an offensive player trending in the right direction, poked down a free at a play on the far sideline. Last touch, the Fordham Rams. It'll stay here with UMass. 7.34 to play first half. UMass trails by one. Jaden Curry splits two at the top of the circle, rises with the left hand and draws the contact on the dribble drive. And you can tell he had one thing on his mind, getting to the rack right there, but the aggression will pay off for Jaden Curry. The freshman guard, six foot flat at a Charlotte, North Carolina, heads to the free throw line with seven and a half to play in our first half. No complaints to the referees from Keith Ergo this time. Just some words of advice for Yole Akawobo. Keep those arms straight up. Don't swipe at the ball. That's what got you in trouble here, coach said. And probably a little bit differently worded language, but 
Now it's Curry at the line. So Curry, the lefty, stands at the free throw line, short off the left side of the iron as well. He's only a 71 percenter on the campaign. He's, he's a freshman, Chris, and really not a normal starter. A top 20 point guard in his class, a top 20 player regardless of position out of the state of Florida, so highly touted. Yeah, and Miles, he struggled last time out. Versus Davidson, he played 18 minutes and went 3 of 11 from the floor, 1 of 5 from downtown. Maybe he bounces back with the increased touches today. And a round and no good, so Florida able to hang on to the lead, 22 to 21. 7-15 and tick in first half. Here's Will Richardson. Lefty forecourt, chest pass over to Josh Rivera at the top of the circle, back to Richardson. Richardson, left arc, steps into the mid-range. Jay, and he's got it. A pretty release from Will Richardson. It's a 24-21 lead, and UMass wasting no time in the offensive set. Here's Curry, top of the circle, swings over for Cross, stuck in the left corner, over to Sanford at the 15-foot mark, rises on the jumper, and no good, and go out of bounds, going for his own miss. Last touch, Hank and Sanford, so the Fordham Rams pick up the stop. 6.54 to play first half. Fordham, the lead in the ball, 24 to 21, Rams. Yeah, Miles, they're getting after it, and as Kyle Rose relieves Josh Rivera, comes in the game for him, this lineup's only gonna get more physical. Look at the aggression from Richardson on that play before to drive in, realize it wasn't gonna be there, and step back and drain it from the deep two range. You like to see that. Charlton leans in at the top of the circle, dribble drive, pull it from 15, and he cans the mid-range J. Touch money trail, looking like it right there. 6.37 first half, Fordham on top five, 26 to 21. Sorry, was someone just talking about Fordham making nice mid-range jumpers, or was that just me? <laughs> Hankins Stanford outside left perimeter swings it up top for Curry. Curry bounces over to Hankins Stanford and he dumps it down low for Cross. Cross on the dribble drive and he's no good short on the two hand lay. Antrell Charlton the rebound kicks it out right arc for Richardson over to Ramad Dean. Dean the corner three no good off the left side of the iron. Matt Cross the rebound a little same team action with Jalen Curry and Curry now the point guard to push ahead for UMass. UMass the skip pass over right side for Diggins and Diggins just saved it from going out of play with two hands. Hand off for Matt Cross. Cross over to Curry. Curry outside on the left arc. Draws the contention from Ramad Dean and gets Diggins. Diggins right arc three and he steps into it and rattles it home. Keith Lurgo can't believe the closeout. And 24 to 26. UMass back within just two. Not the game to leave Diggins open, Miles. Last time out, he made four of his six threes in 33 minutes. Now you see a substitution happening because of the closeout you mentioned. Elijah Gray set to check in at the next whistle is Antrell Charlton under the basket and a lefty finish from the left block. Catches the lob and finishes. Fordham back on top by four, 28 to 24. Antrell Charlton picks off the pass in transition. Charlton lobs it up to Dean and Dean can't handle it, but he is fouled. So Ramad Dean will be headed back to the free throw line, 5-13 first half. Fordham on top, 28-24. And Miles, Ramad Dean is a play finisher for these Fordham Rams. He's certainly not a point guard. He's certainly not someone who can initiate offense, but whether it's from the corner with that quick release three that maybe his Bahamian buddy, <laughs> buddy Heald taught him, or with a lob inside and his physicality, whether it's the shooting or the muscle miles, Ramad Dean finishes plays and he acts quick. That's what Fordham needs, no hesitation. Just make the right moves. And they're calling this a foul on the floor. Ramad Dean was rising in transition, finishing off an alley-oop. So I'm genuinely shocked that they called this one on the floor. And Keith Urgo can't believe no coach. either. Unbelievable. Keith Ergo cannot believe they called that one on the foul, but with 5.08 to play in the first half, Will Richardson got it on the right arc, steps into the three, well short, finds Kyle Rose on the rebound, Rose steps into it, strong off the right side of the iron, another offensive rebound. Here's Elijah Gray, back up top for Will Richardson, 4.55 and ticking here in the first half. 28-24, Fordham Rams, the lead in the basketball. Antrell Charlton, left arc triple, no good. Off the left side, but another offensive rebound and a fourth try. Kyle Rose earns it, and he's got it on the left arc. Rose calls out to play, 13 to shoot. Dumps it down low for Elijah Gray, and hooks it around, no good, around and out on the lay. Matt Cross finally wraps it up with the rebound, and the Fordham Rams 0 for 4 on that trip, and now with 425 in the first half, UMass to walk it up, moving left to right. Miles, what was the word from earlier? The persistence was there. They kept it going, just need better results next time. Dumping it down low there and drawing the contact was the cutter. And the aggression will pay off for Josh Cohen. 
And Elijah Gray, the guilty party, with 4.16 to play in our first half. And now Keith Ergo getting some words from our near side fans. But Fordham still a narrow lead, 28 to 24. And the Fordham Rams have just committed their 10th foul of this first half. So Josh Cohen is in the double bonus for UMass, but he clangs strong off the heel. No good on the first of two. So the lead will hold for Fordham at four. Like you said, Miles, double bonus. So no consequences for Cohen for missing the first free throw, except he doesn't get the point. He'll still get a second and a chance to bring UMass within three right here with 4.16 left in the first half. It's a good time for them to start just staying around, right? The Rams are a team that when it gets late, they go mud wrestling, they want to compete. UMass was down a lot early. They've made it close. That's where they need to be at this point. So Cohen salvages something from the trip. One of two there. And UMass within three. 28 to 25. Fordham on top. Here's Ramad Dean. Right side rises with the right hand through contact. No good. Strong there. And Jalen Curry picks up the board underneath. The undersized point guard snatches it and hands off for Diggins at the top of the circle here for UMass. Hey, Diggins pulls it back. Steps into the three and cans it right there. 28 all, UMass ties us up with 3.41 to play in the first half. Another defensive breakdown for the Fordham Rams that results in a score. Richardson, right R3, pops it no good in and out there. Elijah Gray going for the rebound, draws the contact down low. This will be on the floor. 3.30 to play in our first half. 28 all, UMass has battled back in what was early a defensive affair, but now both teams heating up a little bit here from Western Massachusetts. We're gonna take it to our media timeout. 3.30 to play in our first 20. It's 28 all here from Western Massachusetts. But with that, we'll send it back to our Rose Hill Studios for another scoreboard update with Isabella Terracini. The one-on-one -on -one scoreboard. Well, it looks like the Wizards can do just fine without Magic as they lead 65-41 to 41 at halftime. Double digits. Also in NBA news, Cleveland coming off a big win last night over Boston just to be dragged along by Atlanta 28-31 to 31 to start the second quarter. Sliding the puck over to New York, if you can stay up, you can catch the Islanders versus the Sharks tomorrow, at, tomorrow night at 10.30. If you can't, Buffalo and Toronto are knotted up at zero starting the second period. Also, the Avalanche are on a revenge tour against the Red Wings coming up at 9.30. I'm Isabella Terracini with your one-on-one -on -one scoreboard. Twenty-eight to twenty-eight, the Fordham Rams in a tight one here on the road with the UMass Minutemen. 3.30 to play in our first half. I'm Miles Grossman alongside Chris Persianen. And Chris, the Fordham Rams have gone absolutely stagnant now offensively. 0 of 6 from the field in their last six shots. One of their last eight. And the Fordham Rams did just an unbelievable job offensively speaking in that first 10 minutes, Chris, holding UMass to a, a, an extremely poor clip. But now Fordham is the team ice cold from the field. Well, Miles, three and a half minutes left in the first half. That means that 16 and a half minutes have been played and Fordham led for 14 minutes and 15 seconds of those 16 and a half minutes. UMass led for just a minute. The game's now been tied for over a minute. I think we're gonna see that tide time rise as this one goes on. Doesn't feel like either team's about to break away, both playing physically, both rebounding. What else can you ask for? It's 8-10 basketball, miles, <laughs> ground, and pound. So Fordham has worked their way into the single bonus. Elijah Gray stands at the free throw line, set to attempt his first free throw of the day. 28 all here, 330 in the first half. Gray no good off the front of the iron, so they call this one a shooting foul, believe it or not. He misses the first, but he is still rewarded with a second free throw. And Chris, a little bit of a makeup call here. Maybe, Miles. Elijah Gray hasn't had the shooter's touch recently. 0 of 3 from three-point land last time out in his 12 minutes, and he's 7 of 35 over his last 11 games from three-point land, but he can still impact the game inside, drawing fouls, stopping the clock, getting to the line, and 
it's most importantly getting these Rams some rebounds. So the high arcing free throw falls out of the right hand of Elijah Gray. He heads to the pine now. Five out there for the Fordham Rams. Kyle Rose, Antrell Charlton, Jameer Tripp, Josh Rivera, and Ramad Dean. UMass basketball, here's Matt Cross to cross the timeline near side four court. Finds the freshman in Marquee Worthy. Worthy hands off for the curling, Jalen Curry. And Curry, the point guard on the UMass logo, drains some clock here. Now just 12 seconds to shoot. 29 to 28, the Fordham Rams lead. UMass, top of the circle, seven seconds to shoot. They swing it over to Worthy. Worthy, the freshman, back at the top of the circle for Diggins. Diggins over to Cross, two to shoot. Cross steps into the mid-range Jays, no good. Off the heel, Josh Cohen rips down the offensive board and swings it over right side for Cross. Cross over to Worthy at the top of the key. Dribble drive out of the freshman Worthy, and it's swatted back by Ramad Dean. UMass and Matt Cross can't handle the rebound on the far sideline. So Fordham will get the possession here. 2.49 to play first half. Fordham a one-point lead and the ball. 28-29, to they lead. Miles, it's time for them to make something happen here. They can go on a run. It starts here with a 2-0 or a 3-0 run. Big possession. Rose, top of the circle, 2.41 to play in the first half. Kicks it over to Antrell Charlton. Charlton, back to Jameer Tripp. Thought about the three, finds Rivera. Rivera pulls from 15, and he's no good. Off the left side of the iron, Josh Cohen pulls down the free rebound on the weak side. 2.27 and ticking. Here's Curry. Over to Cohen at the top of the circle. Cohen got to pick up his dribble and dump it down low for Worthy. Worthy rises from the right block and banks it home off the right side of the window. UMass, their first lead in quite a while. Might be their first of the game, 30-29. to 2-10 and taken first half. Cohen's funny, Miles. Whenever he gets stuck with the ball in his hands, he sticks his tongue out while he's looking for a teammate. <laughs> you can almost tell when he's uncomfortable. The Rams got him off kilter to start. Rose, right arc three. He steps into it, and he's pure. Kyle Rose nails it from the right arc, gives the Fordham Rams their lead right back at 32 to 30. 149 and ticking first half. Diggins crosses the timeline near side four court and kicks it up top for Jalen Curry. Curry back to Diggins at the top of the circle. 140 and ticking. They'll find Worthy. Right elbow jumper out of the freshman Worthy. No good. Off the left side of the iron. Matt Cross can't control the rebound. And it's out of bounds unless we got a foul on the floor. No, they'll just say out of bounds off UMass under the basket. So 135 to play in our first 20, Chris. 32 to 30 is the Fordham lead with the basketball. Yeah, Ramad Dean's going to be the one inbounding. He's been the ram of the game so far for me in terms of defensive execution, closing out and switching. Also, keeping the ball moving on offense, making quick decisions. You know, he was averaging about 12 minutes a game, 13 minutes a game to start the season. Over his last six, he's played almost 23. So he's a big part of this Ram squad now, Ramad Dean. Buck 25 to play in the first half. Here's Antrell Charlton back to the basket at the top of the circle. He'll bounce it over for Ramad Dean on the left elbow. Back to Kyle Rose, right side perimeter. Dumps it down low for Josh Rivera. Nine seconds to shoot. Here's Josh Rivera, right side mid post. Rises right of control, but the offensive rebound, Jameer Tripp. Three seconds to shoot, Jameer Tripp. Dribble drive, no good, out of control, gets his own miss and it'll be a shot clock violation a minute four to play in the first half Fordham comes up empty there 32 to 30 they still lead but you mass the basketball yeah Jameer Tripp with a tough go of it there he gets inside gets the shot up in time and hits all backboard so the shot clock doesn't reset when he gets his own rebound he ran out of time to even get to put back off. Marquee Worthy, chest pass over to Matt Cross. Now Jalen Curry to cross the timeline. Gets it over to Diggins and swings it over to Cross. Cross steps into the triple and beautiful ball movement out of UMass. Minuteman regain the lead 33 to 32. Keith Thurgo wants the timeout. 50.4 seconds to play in our first half. UMass gives himself back the lead and Chris, that was their crispiest ball movement of the first half. Yeah, the Minutemen are well coached, Miles. We know what Frank Martin does. He builds programs. And you got to think a little deeper about what that really means. It means he's good at getting guys united under a common goal. He's good at getting guys to play for him and to play his way. And you're seeing it thus far. You're not seeing anyone be too selfish. Jalen Curry, probably the only Minuteman that's thrown up a couple wayward looks that you think maybe weren't the best shots. But he's a freshman guard getting a spot start. Can you blame him? Overall... They're playing really nice basketball. Now Fordham is shooting better from downtown. Fordham is executing more quickly, but that doesn't mean they're scoring more points. 
And Fordham one of their last 10 from the field, Chris. And the only trail by a singular point, 33 to 32, is the UMass advantage here with 50.4 to play. And the Fordham Rams, their defense has really bailed out their offense. They can't get a shot to fall in the last few minutes. Yeah, Miles, that's why it's so important to not start in a hole like you did in Philadelphia because when you do go through a little rut, you won't have a huge uh, deficit. Whoa, so what just happened? Back underway here from Western Massachusetts, and we got the foul in the backcourt. Jalen Curry looking like a freshman there. Way too aggressive on the reach. Sent Antrail Charlton to the deck. Now we got our referees saying we got to clean up the moisture on the court here with 45.7 seconds to play in our first half. Antrail Charlton, of course, with the Fordham Rams in the single bonus, will head to the free throw line. And Charlton, just the 65 for center in his senior campaign, has an opportunity to give the Fordham Rams back the lead. It's 33-32, to 32, UMass on top here at home. Miles, the Mullen Center much larger than the historic Rose Hill Gymnasium, but their student section is about nine kids. I got to say, <laughs> Roosevelt does a better job of mucking it up from the fan section, getting another team's heads. So Antrell Charlton good on the first of two free throws, making it a 33 to 33 tie. 47.5 seconds in the first half. Charlton three dribbles with the right hand. Here's some booze from a pretty empty Mullen Center, and he cans the second free throw. 34 to 33, Fordham back on top, 45 seconds in the first half. The freshman point guard, Jalen Curry, at just 160 pounds. One of the smaller guards in all of the Atlantic 10. Skips it high for another freshman in Worthy. Back to Curry, righty slot, skip pass over left side for Diggins. Diggins down low, and the pass is picked off. Kyle Rose snatches it out of the air. Keith Ergo says, slow it down. And now 22 seconds in the first half. The Fordham Rams with the shot clock off can hold for the final shot here in the first half. They got the lead, 34 to 33. And if Fordham and Keith Ergo elect to not call the timeout, seven seconds to shoot. Here's Ramad Dean, top of the key, steps into the triple, strong off the heel. Rebound down low, Jalen Curry, the freshman, the catch and the heave. No good off the left side of the iron. And that's how the first half comes to an end here inside the Mullen Center. 34 to 33, Fordham a narrow lead, but they've missed 10 of their last 11 from the field, Chris. They can't seem to get a shot to fall, but the defense bailed them out in the first half. Well, Miles, let me tell you something. They may have missed 10 of their last 11, but they're shooting now right about where they do for this season from field goal percentage standards. So for the Fordham Rams, they ended up evening out by the halftime mark to about their average level of play. And for UMass, missing two key rotational players, I think having a one-point lead over them is still something to look at as a benchmark. But it's integral that the Rams keep the main thing the main thing and try to go about this second half saying, hey, one is the least we're going to lead by throughout this second half because I can tell you right now, this Mullen Center, it's not that empty. It's just not full of vociferous mm -hmm. fans. It's yeah. not full of raucous fans. Absolutely. I think if this game is close and there's less than five minutes to go, you see this place come alive. So with that said, even though we don't have students who are – you know, here to cause a mess. The fans will get into it if UMass stays close. You need Fordham to pull away. And the Minutemen really having their best season in quite a while. First time with double-digit wins in the Atlantic 10 since 2014-2015. 19 wins overall. Looking for win number 20 here in year two of the Frank Martin era. But they trail by one at the half. Fordham 34, UMass Minutemen 33. But with that, we're going to take a quick break here from Western Massachusetts. Send it back south to our Rose Hill Studios in the Bronx for the halftime show with Jack Warner and Isabella Terracini. The one-on-one -on -one halftime report. A back and forth affair over in Amherst, Massachusetts for the Fordham men's basketball team as they lead the UMass Minutemen 34 to 33 at the half. Welcome into the one-on-one -on -one halftime report. I am Jack Warner, and if you've been tired of hearing my voice in between Fordham men's basketball games and to conclude Fordham men's basketball games, you'll be delighted to know that my partner here, Isabella Terracini, who's been on updates tonight, is making her on-air debut, so that's very exciting. I'm happy to have you here with me happy to to, uh, to analyze some Fordham men's hoops here at the halftime over in UMass. 
Now, before we hop into the game specifically and things that we saw in this first half, I think it's important to sort of set the stage for a game like this one. Obviously, no, you know, it's no stranger to anyone. It's the elephant in the room. Hasn't been the greatest Florida men's basketball season that we've seen this year. 12 and 17 on the year. But nevertheless, once it comes March, it's anybody's time. And I think you're seeing it in a game like this one where Fordham is still competing to get a bye in the A-10 tournament. They can still get a single bye at the Barclays Center next week for the A-10 tournament if they can win out. And tonight is a big test on the road against a very good UMass team sitting at 19-10. and 10. UMass is also playing for something, something a little greater than Fordham. They're playing for a double bye. So... I think it's really important to sort of set the stage with a storyline like that because it it means two things. It means, first of all, you can never, ever let your foot off the gas in a season that may not go your way, exactly like Fordham experienced this year, where they're still in sights of a single buy in the tournament, which would be a big advantage for them. But it also shows that this could really light a fire under the rear end of these Fordham Rams who could really play spoiler here to a really big double buy opportunity for UMass. How iconic would that be? I mean, to get into the actual game would be a different story, but just to play a little bit of Santa here, we want to give them a, we want to give them a break. We want to give them a gift, giving them a buy. They need a week off. And honestly, they also want to cut up UMass's trends of, you know, being this big name, big party school, just, I honestly, I think, I I want Fordham to be the, to be the Santa, and I want them to just cut it up. It's it's motivations in in multiple ways. Like I said, you're trying to get something for yourself. You're trying to get that first that that single buy in the tournament. But you're also again trying to play spoiler, like we spoiler, excuse me, like we both said. But let's let's hop into the game here because we got a lot to unpack. Now Fordham does lead by one at the half, but. It didn't look this close when the game opened up. You had an 11-3 to start for these Fordham Rams. And I think one of the things that they started to run into, and I think is part of the reason that you have such a close game here at the half, is just that it hasn't been a consistent scoring effort for Fordham. You're seeing a lot of Fordham runs. You're seeing an 11-3 to run. You're seeing right around the midway of the first half where Kyle Rose and Will Richardson back-to-back three-pointers two possessions in a row you're seeing points in the game where they're getting things cooking but then you're also seeing two to three minute scoring droughts in between where UMass claws their way back into things and when you can get the offense you know get the offense churning and you can get the offense going I think Fordham looked very good very strong very comfortable from the field shooting better than they usually do throughout this season but they missed 10 of their last 11 shots closing out the half they need consistency is key. They need to be able to keep their foot on the gas because this is, you know, we've seen in past games this season, Fordham has kept teams around. And the more that you keep teams around, it doesn't matter how good they are, whether you, everyone, for lack of a better phrase, people kind of laughed at NJIT on the schedule when they came to town. And look how that one ended up. They let NJIT hang around and they pulled off the victory. So I think it's really about making sure Fordham can, can maintain that consistency in the second half that I don't think was present in the first half. I think a better word for consistency is just keeping keeping motivations high, keeping keeping the the dream to win there. They want to win. They want the buy. They need to prove it. OK, they proved it in the first couple minutes. And then all of a sudden there was the drought and then they came back a little bit. And now they're only up by one. And you never know what's going to happen in the second half. I mean, it could it could go any way they want it to. So. Just a real quick, at a glimpse, just some big spots to talk about in this Fordham first half. You got Kyle Rose leading the charge with 11 points. He's shooting 4-6 of six from the field, 3-4 of four from three-point land. He's fresh off a career-high 31 points in their loss at St. Joe's over the weekend, but he continues to be an unbelievable scorer this season, really charging this offense, giving them the oomph that they need. You got 
Uh, Roma Dean, who looks great on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, his defensive presence has really, it was really played a key role in that first half, holding up UMass on multiple different possessions. He's looking great in transition, great, you know, great closeouts. He's looking good on the switches. He is looking really good. He's leading that Fordham defense. He's, we're going to need to see more of that defensive stability in the second half. The one thing to raise your eyebrows at a little bit, 10 fouls in the first half got UMass the double bonus. Foul trouble has been a problem for Fordham for pretty much all of this season. UMass didn't even reach, or excuse me, they did reach the bonus. Fordham did reach the bonus, eight UMass fouls, but it took late into the first half for that to occur. So, yes, this is a physical game, but it needs to be a disciplined game as well. So, Isabella, as we head down into you know the end of this show and send it back to Amherst here pretty soon, what do you want to see from the Fordham Rams in the second half so they can come home victorious tonight from Amherst? Less fouls. We need a lot less aggressiveness. We need a lot less um, contact, sort of. Like, this is still a basketball game, and this still is um, – there still needs to be some sort of, like you said, um, discipline with this team. They need to understand that the fouls is what's going to get them into a lot more trouble than needed, and they also need a rebound. I mean – they just need to defensively and offensively rebound a lot more and just play play basketball, honestly. And I think that's a big thing is just playing a clean second half. It sounds simple, but it's it, it really has proven to make or break games for Fordham all throughout this season. But that is going to just about do it for the one-on-one halftime report. We're going to send you back to the Mullen Center in Amherst, Massachusetts, to Miles Grossman and Chris Persianen, but not before a quick coach's sound that both our wonderful broadcasters were able to have with Coach Keith Ergo prior to tonight's matchup. Coach, last time out, another Kyle Rose career day, this time in a loss, but 31 points on 19 shots, and he's taking and he's making a lot of shots, and outside of him, no one above eight shots. In terms of that second and third option outside of Kyle, is there anyone that you'd like to see step up volume-wise to sort of diversify the shots against UMass? Everyone. Mm -hmm. I'd like everyone to step up. You know, Antrell's been a consistent scorer for us right around that 9-10 point mark, but, you know, guys like Jaffe, um, and, and Will, and maybe Josh Rivera, you know, those are, you know, and even Elijah Gray, you know, those are some guys that can make some shots to help the, help relieve the pressure on Kyle, but um, we need more from everybody. It's not just those guys. We need everybody to play at their best basketball. We need every coach to coach at their highest level um, when, you're, when you're going down the stretch, and we feel like we've been heading in that direction. You know, this year has proven that anybody in, the, in this league can, can go on a run. Uh, and these guys believe they can, and that's what we're planning for. And now UMass, one of the last teams you're yet to see in 2024. Frank Martin has this program in a far different spot than last year. They're looking for win number 20 this week, and, you know, it's really two names at the top, Josh Cohen and Matt Cross, and no disrespect to the rest of their roster, but it is a pretty severe drop-off offensively outside of those two names. They average over 31 as a pair together. What's been the message to this team to try and lock down that one-two punch at the top? Tough, nasty, gritty. That's what Frank Martin has been since he's been a coach. I, I respect him as much as any coaches I, I've ever seen in this business. He's been tremendous to me. I love watching the way he coaches. Um, and as a result of, uh, you know you're going to get an absolute dogfight. And you better bring your hard hat when you play UMass. And, you know, I, I think a lot of folks used to say and sometimes do about us, when you play Fordham, you better bring your hard hat. And I think uh, I, I, I want that reputation. I think our guys want that reputation. And UMass certainly has that. So does Frank Martin. So these guys understand what the task is going to be. If we don't show up and we're not physically ready to play, it's going to be a tough night, guys. Coach, thank you so much for your time. As always, good luck. Go Rams. And welcome back here courtside here at the Mullen Center in Amherst, Massachusetts. Special thanks to Jack Warner and Isabella Terracini for the halftime show there. And as you just heard, that was Keith Urgo. He gave you a lot right there. Looking for that second option to back up Kyle Rose once again at the half. Kyle Rose has 11 at the break, four of six from the field. No one else in double figures, of course. 
Some in uptake a little bit from Antrail Charlton. Two of five from the field, of course, on pace or double-digit shot attempts, something that no other Ram besides Kyle Rose was able to do last time out. But, Chris, it is halftime, and the Fordham Rams have a narrow lead. They were ice cold to close out the first half from the field, one of their last 11 to be exact, but they got back to that Fordham brand, and... Really, you're just really looking for 20 minutes of the same. You do have a one-point advantage on the road against a Frank Martin-led program. Yeah, 100% miles. The one-point advantage at halftime is big because it shows that Fordham at least did not get into a hole to start. That had happened, and then they went on a scoring drought that they did. Well, they'd be down double digits right now, but yes. they're able to say they're up. The problem in the A-10, anyone can beat anyone, the motto of the year. It means that no lead is safe. And at this juncture of the game, the halfway mark, it's a UMass Minute team that is kind of inherently volatile due to some of their inexperience that might just come out storming and cohesive in the second half. I want to take a look at a breakdown of their roster here. Only three scholarship players were set to return last year for the UMass Minutemen. Frank Martin, the head coach, brought in eight freshmen, and he got two transfers in Josh Cohen, who you talked about a lot, and Daniel Hankin Sanford, who I talked about a lot yeah. in the first half, four of those eight freshmen play more than 10 minutes a game. And there are two sophomores that play 18 plus minutes a night. So the Fordham Rams, not the only inexperienced team here. The UMass Minutemen are as well. Lots of sophomores, freshmen, juniors, and very few seniors here on this team. Absolutely, Chris. And, you know, I like that you're going a little big picture with this UMass team because it's a very historic program. You take a look up, you see Julius Irving hanging in the stands. You see Marcus Camby hanging to his left, and then John Calipari. And those really the final two names there that I want to talk about. Back in 1996, John Calipari, a young and up-and-coming John Calipari, was the head coach here, and he had a very talented player by the name of Marcus Camby. Of course, Marcus Camby would lead that team to a Final Four appearance, but in the end, he ended up getting caught from take for taking some money from some sports agents. They had to vacate all profits from that Final Four run. John Calipari was forced to leave the program, but now it's the Frank Martin era here at UMass. There's been many famous coaches to come through this program, but just in the last couple years, Frank Martin has brought in a whole new class of freshmen, a whole new tier of freshmen, when I say class and also a whole new class of transfers. Matt Cross and Josh Cohen are two very talented names alongside Rasul Diggins. Three transfers right there that never would have landed at UMass without a high pedigree coach like Frank Martin. Yeah, you take a look at Frank Martin's resume, Miles. He's 34 and 26 leading the Minutemen, but his career record, 322 to 227 losses. He made the Elite Eight at Kansas State. He made the Final Four at South Carolina. And now, here in Amherst, he's got 19 wins this season. That's the most for UMass since 2014. Mm -hmm. What does he have to say about it? All the, all the success, all the program building? I'm lucky schools believed in me with incredible coaches and players. We got a lot of work to do at UMass men's <laughs> basketball. So Frank Martin, always that program builder mentality that Keith Ergo is trying to build to these Rams bring to these Rams building something year by year. And Chris, one positive I do want to highlight before we get underway in half number two, the Fordham Rams turned the basketball over 16 times in that loss against St. Joe's. We had a referee waving a towel in front of us. I don't even know what that was about, Chris, but they turned the ball over 16 times last time out. Well, only four turnovers at the half here. So the Fordham Rams doing a great job taking care of the basketball. Here's Jameer Tripp right out the break. Steps into the right arc three. No good. Short off the heel there. Jalen Curry, the freshman point guard, rips away the board. And we're back underway. 20 seconds into the second half. UMass the basketball trailing by one. Jalen Curry angles the way to the left side. Perimeter hands off for Cross. Two and overhead pass up top for Cohen. Cohen over to Diggins on the right perimeter. Finds Jing Gay, pardon me. Jing Gay short off the right side of the iron. Fordham Rams can't corral the miss. Last touch, Ramad Dean on the offensive baseline at UMass, staying right here with the Minutemen in their home whites. 40 seconds into the second half, Fordham 34, UMass 33. I think Ramad Dean just got a little beer on him going for that ball <laughs> in the stands, Miles. Cohen 
Catch and fade away from 10. No good. Short with the right hand. Abdu Sambila wrestling for it. And we got some contact on the floor. Jaden Jinge, the freshman, was far too aggressive. And it took a really long time to get the whistle out of the far side referee. But after three and a half seconds of contact on Abdu Sambila, they will get the foul call. So 19-17 to play in regulation. Now Fordham coming out of the foul with the basketball. They lead 34-33. to Antrell Charlton pushing left to right here in the road Maroons. He's got the dreads tied up, pulls up from 15 from the right elbow. No good, strong off the heel. Jalen Curry, the freshman point guard, flips it over to Diggins in the offensive set for UMass. Here's the big guy in Cohen, Cohen. The lob down low for Matt Cross. The catch and finish, no good. In and out there with the right hand. And Abdu Simbila rips away the rebound there. Aggressive, and he gets it up top for Trip. Trip dribble drive in transition, and he immediately turns it right back over to Jalen Curry. Curry in transition. Here the handoff for Diggins, and they'll slow it down here. The Minutemen will. 18-34 in the second half. They trail by one. 40 Excuse me, 34 to 33. Josh Cohen right side mid post, and he loses the dribble. Out of bounds down low. Ramad Dean forces the turnover there, and the Fordham Rams get the basketball back. It's a chaotic first 90 seconds of the second half, Chris. Hey, Miles, you ever seen A10 basketball before? <laughs> These 10 guys on the court are right at home right now, mucking it up, going back and forth like an argument. This is the A10. It's physical, it's grimy. 18-22 and ticking in regulation. Ramad Dean swings it over to Kyle Rose on the right perimeter. Angles up top, now crosses over left to right. Thought about the three on cross and dumps it down low. Low post injury for Abdus and Bila stuck on the left block and he travels. Drag the right pivot. It was pretty obvious and it's going back the direction of UMass. Moving right to left. Fordham commits the turnover. 18-10. In the second half, Fordham still on top, 34 to 33. You mass the basketball. Yeah, not effective with their possessions early here are the Fordham Rams in the second half. They got to switch that up, Miles. Jalen Curry, the undersized point guard, swings it over left corner for Jinge. Jinge dumps it down low for the cutter, and Ramad Dean pokes it out of play down low. Last touch, Ramad Dean saw that pass coming clear as day. Couldn't corral the steal. 17 to 56, 17 56 to play here in the second half. 34 to 33, Fordham still a narrow lead. Here's Matt Cross for UMass. Kicks it up top for Cohen. Cohen dribble drive left side of the lane. He'll draw the contact and get it to go off the left side of the window. Frank Martin likes that one on the bench. UMass regains the lead, 35 to 34. And one more free throw coming for the senior Ford at six foot 10, Josh Cohen. Yeah, Josh Cohen, Miles, we've said, we're gonna say his name a lot today. And here it is again. He gets inside. I'm not comparing them as players, right? But it looks a little like Nikola Jokic inside because he just turns around and flips it at the basket like he's at the playground. There's almost an unserious extent to which he takes the shot, but it's good. It goes in, and he's got some touch, too, as he just showed. The non-traditional with the right hand for sure is Josh Cohen, but he cashes in on the free throw. It's 36 to 34. Now UMass the lead at home. 17-41 in the second half. Antrell Charlton at the top of the circle. Angles right and kicks it over for Rose. Poked down a free with the left hand of Rash Rasul Diggins. Poked down a play on the far sideline so the Fordham Rams will retain the possession here. 17-35 in regulation. Fordham now trails by two. And that ball hit a couple fans who were so entrenched in a conversation they didn't even realize <laughs> until they got hit in the face. Miles, that gave me a laugh. And that's a good moment to be sitting courtside just having a good time and the ball touches you. You're living a good life at that point. But here's Jameer Tripp, the freshman at the top of the circle. Fades from 15 on the high arcer and banks it in as the shot clock expires. Knots us up at 36 all. 17-15. And Chris, he just heaved that one up. And to quote Will Richardson there, dang, three. He's surprised that one went in, too. The soft touch from the freshman, Jameer Tripp. The freshman worthy outside on the left arc. Some pressure from Jameer Tripp and the skip pass over for Curry. Outside on the right wing, the dribble drive and the floater with the left hand. Jalen Curry with a pretty finish. And UMass back on top, 38-36, 16-51.
in the second half. Miles, that's one of those floaters where you're waiting for a big man to go and dunk it down, but it was a shot the whole time. And Charles Charlton dribble drive left side of the lane. The step through and no good. Strong with the left hand. Abdu Simbila, the offensive rebound is blocked back. But on the second try, Abdu Simbila gets his own miss and off the glass and down. It's a 38 all tie. You must to push right to left, but Jameer Tripp poked it away. Too aggressive over the back on Matt Cross. Another clock stoppage with 16.27 to play in regulation. It's a 38 to 38 tie here from Western Massachusetts. Josh Rivera to check on for Jameer Tripp. Jafay Medor to check on now for Ahmad Dean. Pair of substitutions here for the Fordham Rams. Yeah, you take a look at the freshman Tripp. Now he's got two fouls, not optimal, but not the worst here in the second half. Again, a little lesson from Keith Ergo as he heads off, gets a pat on the back as he heads to the bench. Here's Diggins, stop the circle, swings it over for Cross. Cross on the left, dark dribble drive, dumps it down low, and Cohen can't handle the pass. Antrell Charlton the steal ahead to Kyle Rose now in transition. Rose swings it over left side for Medor. Medor down low for Simbila and he's blocked from behind. Josh Cohen rejects Simbila down low. And now with 16 minutes flat to play, Jalen Curry, the small point guard, will have it at the top of the key. Hesitates on the left side of the perimeter. A pretty hesitation, kicks it out right off for Worthy. Worthy, the freshman, air balls the three, but the rebound and the finish down low. Josh Cohen on the second opportunity, and UMass the lead, 40-38, to 15-39, and ticking in the second half. Putbacks for both Cohen and Simbella here in the second half. Both teams taking on that persistence theme. Medor on the UMass logo, angles away to the right side perimeter, dribble drive, and he will draw some contact out of the freshman Marquee Worthy. And that one surely on the floor, but now 15-27 to play. That will take us to our under-16 media timeout. UMass, a narrow advantage here at home. 40-38, 15-27 in the second half. You're listening to Fordham Men's Basketball on WFUV Sports. What's going on, guys? I'm Jack Warner, one of your New York Rangers beat reporters for the 2023-2024 NHL season. I'll have you covered all season long as New York looks to bring a Stanley Cup back to the Big Apple in Peter Laviolette's first season as head coach. Follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore Warner 23 for live game updates, post-game media availability, and all things Blue Shirts. to 38 UMass on top over the Fordham Rams here from Amherst Massachusetts I'm Miles Grossman alongside Chris Persiain and Chris 15 27 to play in our second half and let's take a look now at what's at stake for both of these two squads UMass still currently holds a single by fighting for that double by they would need some help by VCU. VCU they need to lose. UMass would need to win out to get the double bye. Of course they're guaranteed a single bye but there is still definitely something to play for and on the other side the Fordham Rams still currently at the moment no bye. Still fighting for that single bye. Looking to avoid having to play on the Tuesday opening day of the Atlantic Tur 10 tournament on Tuesday and Chris that's this upcoming Tuesday if I'm not mistaken. Good God, Miles. It's coming right up, the Fordham Rams. Trying to get hot at the right time. They've lost five out of their last seven games. But, of course, it's March basketball, and really all it takes is one run. Yeah, I mean, any school right now can get hot and become a national story. The message from the Fordham Rams on a game-to-game -game basis has to be a simple three-word question. Why not us? Now, Miles, I know that's corny. Let's start and acknowledge that from the jump. But here's the thing. You're 12 and 17 on the season. You're 6 and 10 in conference play. You went on a two-game win streak for the first time since 2023 in March, and then you lose one on the road. It's put up or shut up time. So back underway here inside the Mullen Center. It's Kyle Rose at the top of the circle. Dribble drive on the right lane. Loses the dribble. Josh Rivera regains at the... Bottom of the cup, kicks it out left arc, Medor. Medor, dribble drive, and he'll pull up from 15, and can the mid-range J 
40 all, now 15.09 to play, and Medora ties us up. Yeah, Medora's seen his minutes dwindle over the course of the season as A-10 play gets more and more physical, his smaller frame not conducive for success, but there you go, he's getting back to his bread and butter, Miles. Worthy, the freshman, skip pass overhead, he finds Diggins at the top of the circle, Diggins, outside on the left arc now, dumps it inside for Cross, Cross, swings it out right arc and gets it back on the right elbow, the dump down low again for Cohen, and the finish with the right hand off the window and in. 14-40 and ticking. UMass regains the lead 42-40 over the Rams. Yeah, Yole Akawovo let Cohen get one step ahead of him in the paint, and that was it. That play was decided right there. Midor angles right to left. Left side perimeter, dribble drive, skip pass right side. Charlton, right R3, and nothing but net out of the right hand to Antrail Charlton and Fordham. Got the lead back, 43-42. Charlton was 0 of 2 from downtown. Now make it 1 of 3 miles. He's seen the ball go through the net. Curry at the top of the circle, 14-07 and ticking here in the second half. 43-42, the Fordham Rams on top. Diggins, chest pass to Curry. Curry steps into the triple, and the freshman no good off the right side of the iron as it dribbles out of play. Last touch, Jalen Curry. And now Worthy will check off on the substitution for UMass. The Fordham Rams, the possession, 13.57 to play. Fordham, a one-point lead and the basketball. Miles, you should have seen Frank Martin after Curry took that shot with 11 seconds left on the shot clock. It was like a parent after his kids discovered the crayons work on the wall. And it's funny because they left Curry out there as well. I thought he was going to be the name to check off. But here's Andrew L. Charlton at the top of the circle. Angles his way over for Josh Rivera. Left perimeter. He kicks it left dark. Here's the three-pointer at him and door. No good off the right side of the iron. But the offensive rebound. Kyle Rose couldn't finish. Antrell Charlton, a second offensive rebound. Finds Kyle Rose, right corner. He'll pop the three. No good. Off the right side of the iron. And Matt Cross snatches up this rebound himself. He'll push up right to left in the home whites. Kick it up top for Cohen. Cohen top of the circle. Two-hand overhead pass for Curry. Curry, the freshman, hesitates at the top of the circle and swings it back over for Hankin Sanford. And a foul away from the basketball. Kyle Rose hit the deck. He got tied up with Josh. Cohen and it looks like Kyle Rose will be the guilty party they'll say a foul on the floor on Kyle Rose 13-10 and it looks like 10 red is the call but our referees are going to take a look at the monitor it was a lot of physicality down low Josh Cohen got tangled up with Kyle Rose the call on the court is just a normal foul Defensive foul on the floor on Kyle Rose. 13 10 to play. It's a 43 to 42 Fordham lead, but both sides will head to the huddle. And Chris, now we got three refs at the monitor. Yeah, Miles, what are they going to do? I mean, you can have the. I'll get the honor. You get the honor. It's our last game. You get the honor. Oh, thank you so much. Miles, <laughs> our referees are gathered in one place now at this court to deliver. To deliver. Thank they you. They are going to watch that tape and see what happened there. Now, my read on the situation personally. It was just guys being dudes. Mm -hmm. Kyle Rose and Josh Cohen get a little tangled up. It becomes a, hey, you let go of me. No, you let go of me. Hey, no, you let go. And all of a sudden, ego gets involved, and then someone's on the ground, and the whistles get blown. A little messy. I think the review is going to reveal two things to the referees. One, Cohen fouled Rose just as much as Rose fouled Cohen. Mm -hmm. But since the initial call was on Rose, they might have to just keep it that way. The second thing they're going to take away is that they're going to want to watch those two for the rest of this one because that got a little chippier than it probably should have given the circumstance. And not the first time we've seen Kyle Rose, of course, have this theme sort of develop. If you remember on the road at Duquesne, Kyle Rose was getting into it with anyone possible. But it seems that as he's gotten older, right, this guy is in his final year with the Fordham Rams, his final year of Division One basketball. His attitude has picked up. His aggression has picked up. He's fearless out he, there. He's the team leader. I mean, without mm -hmm. getting into specifics and saying who it was specifically, earlier in the game there was a defensive breakdown by Fordham after which Rose looked at Ergo and said, sit him. Didn't even have to tell Ergo he, who he was referring to, and Ergo instantly sent someone to the scorer's table to take that player out. So to be honest, I think Rose has kind of grown into a role with these Rams that maybe he wasn't even expecting himself to hold one day remember this is the guy who gave up his starting spot to will richardson because the freshman guard was shooting the lights out from three and served as the superior complement to darius quisenberry and khalid moore now you've heard those two names a million times mm -hmm. if you listen to Fordham men's basketball games here on 90.7 fm or on youtube but the thing is this season rose is the quisenberry he is the more 
he's what this team has. And it, it didn't start that way either. He emerged into that player, setting a career high of 24 points, then 26 points, then 31 points last time out. And we're still getting our near sign referee's word at the moment. 43 to 42. Ford and Rams on top with 13-10 to play. Kyle Rose was whistled for the defensive foul, and now they review to see if any extracurriculars could be called on Josh Cohen, but it looks like it will just be the foul on the floor. Kyle Rose, the guilty party here with 13-10 to play. Coming out of the timeout, it looks to be UMass basketball. Fordham on top, 43-42, to 13-10 to play. Miles, I was able to run over in time and over here, the referee here on the near side. It's a regular foul on Kyle Rose and a double canceling out technical to both Rose and Cohen. And I appreciate you getting that scoop for us here. Back underway, 13.07 from the Mullen Center. At the top of the circle, it's Diggins. Diggins, top of the key three. Pops it no good off the right side of the iron. Jafay Madour going for the rebound, and he's got the last touch on the far sideline. Going for the rebound that UMass clearly had the last touch for, and I hope our crowd, Mike, picked up a little of the displeasure from our coaching staff to my right. They couldn't believe Medora touched that before it went out of play. Yeah, and R Ronald Ramon went right to his defense saying it was their ball regardless, but Trey Woodall and Keith Ergo weren't so sure. Here's Diggins, top of the key, dribble driving on Abdus Mbila, the scoop with the right hand and the foul away from the basketball. Josh Cohen too aggressive going for the rebound and Frank Martin is giving a serious talking due to Cohen. 12.51 to play. Fordham picks up a stop, draws the contact. They got the lead in the ball, 43-42. to 42. Miles, you missed Martin throw a towel at his own bench. That guy was not happy with the result of that one for the Minutemen. He was just so upset. Midor bursts to speed at the top of the circle, takes the Abdus Mbila screen, and resets on the UMass logo. 20 to shoot, and he draws the foul. Jaden Curry, the freshman, has just been oh so aggressive, reaching in time and time again. And that's going to be his third of the day. 12.41 to play. It'll be the near sideline inbound for the Fordham Rams. 43-42. to 42. Rams on top here on the road in UMass. Getting into a little bit of a scoring drought. Now scoreless for over two and a half minutes. And Antrell Charlton, the trigger man, right in front of us here courtside. Great facilitator for the Rams. Low turnover guy as well. So him sharing the court with Medor and Richardson is really interesting. Rivera, top of the key. Dribble drive, spins around, heart of the key. The turnaround with the right hand, short off the front of the iron. And Hank and Sanford pulls down the rebound for UMass. They got the basketball trailing by one. The UConn transfer Diggins at the top of the circle. Swings it over for the big and Josh Cohen. Cohen wide open left guard three and nothing but net. They don't expect him to take that shot. That's not part of the scouting report, but the big nails it. And it's 45 to 43. UMass the lead, 12.09 to play. Cohen takes one three a game. That's his second he's taken in this one. So they really were not expecting that. Charlton, top of the circle, thought about the three on cross, pulls up from 18, no good, off the front of the iron, Abdu going for the rebound down low. And we'll see what the whistle is. Rebound, we'll see last touch, it looks to be off of the Fordham Rams. So with 11.54 to play, a big three out of the big six foot 10 Josh Cohen from the left arc. UMass the lead, 45 to 43, but with 11.54 to play, we'll now send it back to our Rose Hill Studios for a scoreboard update with Isabella Terracini. The one-on-one -on -one scoreboard. In A-10 news, the George Mason Patriots have a 66-51 lead over the Rhode Island Rams in the battle for the buys. The St. Bonaventure Bonnies and George Washington Revs are in it to win it live where the Revs are on top 84 to 73 with under three in the game. And the Huskies are leading the sled to Wisconsin to battle number eight Marquette, where UConn leads five to four. Then coming up at nine, another top 25 faceoff where the Iowa State Cyclones try to stay on top of the number 20 BYU Cougars. And it seems as though the Cougars have caught up with the Knights 52 to 46 from Orlando. With the one-on-one -on -one scoreboard, I'm Isabella Terracini.
11.54 to play here from Amherst, Massachusetts. Courtside here at the Mullen Center. I'm Miles Grossman alongside Chris Persson. And Chris, UMass a narrow lead, 45 to 43. And the big guy, Josh Cohen, just hit a wide open left arc three and the entire Fordham defense said, hey, we're gonna give him that shot. Simply not on the scouting report, but doesn't touch an ounce of rim there. Nothing but net and UMass regains the lead. Yeah, Miles, this game is physical and chippy, but it's also a matter of this one being a low assist kind of game. These two teams right now are combining for about well, Fordham's typical assist output for an entire game on average. And what that shows you is that it's a lot of second chance buckets, a lot of one on one opportunities, a lot of late shot clock attempts for both of these sides. So back on the way here from the Mullen Center, Kyle Rose at the top of the circle, hezitates in on Diggins and takes the Abdu Simbila screen at the top of the circle. Rose kicks it over right arc, Richardson. Richardson on the bounce pass down low for Abdu Simbila. Simbila the fade from 15, and he got it through the contact. Nothing but net from the short corner. Abdu Simbila showing off the range, and now a three-point opportunity for Abdu Simbila. Yeah, how about that to get your squad going? Abdu Tsimbila, not a shooter. And you can say that again. He's the big man down low from Yaoundé, Cameroon. And here he comes up big, literally, <laughs> with the turnaround J. That looked a little bit like his fellow Yaoundé Cameroonian, Joel Embiid. So no good off the left side of the iron on the free throw. So we can't complete the old fashioned three point play. The score is tied 45 all with 11.31 to play. Here's Diggins outside on the right perimeter. Chest pass up top for Jane and Jingay, the freshman, the handoff for the curling Worthy. Worthy back to Jingay. Jingay at six foot four. Some pressure from Kyle Rose, right side four court. Jingay. Chest pass over to Matt Cross, the handoff for Diggins. Diggins thought about the three, three seconds to shoot, the floater, and he got it. As the shot clock expires, and UMass back on top, 45 to 47, UMass the lead. Yeah, Keith Ergo almost knocked our crowd mic over there. He was not happy about that one, and I don't blame him. Richardson at the top of the circle, probes in on the freshman Worthy, kicks it out right arc for Kyle Rose, 12 to shoot. Rose outside right corner, thought about the three, steps into it, no good. Trying to draw the contact, but Jameer Tripp pulls down the offensive rebound, dribble drive for the freshman in the reverse lay. Under the basket, gets it to go, it's 47 all, 10-33 and ticking. Yeah, Tripp too tough, too strong there. Miles, he gets inside and shows off the physicality with the drive and the touch with the reverse finish. Look at the freshman doing it all. The freshman worthy kicks over right corner, Diggins, right corner three, steps into it strong, off the right side of the iron, then off the shot clock there, so the refs <laughs> will blow it dead. And Fordham gets a break and a stop with 10-17 to play, 47 to 47, Fordham basketball. Miles, you're going to see Fordham here slow things down and just try to get good shots. They're at a point in this game, 10 minutes to go. Fresh score essentially at a tie game. They need to play their brand of basketball for every remaining second of this one. Richardson, near side, four court, crosses right to left between the legs. Takes the Amdu Simbila screen and kicks it up top. Kyle Rose, seven to shoot. Kyle Rose, righty slot, three, no good. Off the right side of the iron, Hank and Sanford rips away the rebound for UMass. 47 to 47, it's a tie ball game, 9.45 to play. The freshman worthy, angles away to the left side perimeter and dishes up top for Matt Cross. Cross has been silent, he finds Jinge and is poked free. Regains the pass, is worthy in the dribble drive, coming off the loose ball. Right place, right time for Marquee Worthy, the freshman in UMass. Once again on top, 49 to 47, 920 to play. Worthy, one of those freshmen. He's from Anaheim, California. Maybe you know a thing or two about that, Miles. He averages two points a game only, but a couple buckets already today. Trip bounces high post. Here's Kyle Rose, catches. And as it poked free, Diggins, Kyle Rose regains on the UMass logo. 10 to shoot. Here's Kyle Rose, draws two defenders and swings it over for Rivera. Rivera left arc three, strong off the heel, but the offensive rebound. Richardson dumps it down low. 
And he'll outlet it back to Kyle Rose. 14 to shoot. Here's Kyle Rose. Right side perimeter. Dribble drive. Hangs in the air and draws the contact. No good. But Abdu Sambila, the put back from the left block. We got another tie ball game. 49 all. Eight and a half to play. Jingay dribble drive through two defenders and certainly draws the contact as he misses with the left hand. So a clock stoppage with 8.36 to play. And Chris, another back and forth affair in Western Massachusetts, 49 to 49. Yeah, Miles, I don't know if it's basketball or badminton here. They're going ping pong and across the court, back and forth. You take a look at why, well, I genuinely don't believe it's a lack of shot making at this point. Now it's the defenses locked in and ready to go. What did I say earlier? The home crowd here at the Mullen Center really starting to wake up now that this game is close in the second half. It's the danger zone for the Fordham Rams. So Jane and Jinge, the freshman big guard, just a 56% from the charity stripe, is good on the first of two. 50 to 49, UMass the lead again. One more coming out of the right hand of Jane and Jinge. The freshman, the local kid out of Ayer, Massachusetts. And Miles, they've curtailed his impact so far. He averages almost six points and five rebounds a game, but he's not sh playing too well so far today, and that's because they're letting him shoot. They're leaving him too open, and he's not capitalizing. So pure on the second is Jinge. It's a two-point advantage for the Minutemen here at home. 51-49 to 49 over your Fordham Rams. 8-28 and ticking. Here's Antrell Charlton near side four court. We got a whistle. Foul on the floor well away from the basketball. This one's on the freshman. Marquee Worthy. And the crowd here wants the move and pick. And, of course, that's going to be the foul that brings the Fordham Rams into the single bonus. So for the final 8-25, of the game, the Fordham Rams will shoot free throws on every foul, and Chris, this was a major theme against St. Joe's last time, missing the front end of a one and one. It's demoralizing in college basketball when you miss the front end of a one and one, but here's Kyle Rose with an opportunity, facing a raucous crowd, bends the knees, and he's around and no good. Touched a couple parts of the rim, off the right side of the iron, and no good. But Fordham cannot capitalize. Here's Jalen Curry to push right to left on the UMass logo. 51 to 49. UMass controls the lead off the missed free throw. Miles, we said before the game this was going to be a street fight, and it is one. This game is so physical. Hank and Sanford under the basket finds Cohen. Cohen the turnaround with the right hand. No good. Strong from the right block. Ramad Dean the rebound kicks it over to Antrell Charlton. And now Antrell Charlton to hesitate on the left side. Four court draws two defenders and finds Dean. Dean top of the key. Three. No good. Off the left side of the iron. And Jalen Curry the freshman snatches another rebound down low. Curry will do it all himself and walk it up on the left side of the perimeter. Swing it up top for Cohen and Cohen draws the block. Antrell Charlton too aggressive on the foul on the right elbow. That's going to be on the floor. Another clock stoppage with 737 to play. UMass a narrow lead 51 to 49 but with 737 to play that's going to take us to our under eight media timeout. This is Fordham men's basketball on WFUV Sports. Hi, this is Mike Green, WFUV class of 1983. WFUV is the flagship station of Fordham Athletics with live coverage of Fordham football, Fordham men's and women's basketball, in addition to Saturday one-on-one. -on -one. Stay right here on 90.7 FM for all things WFUV sports. Seven to play here from Amherst, Massachusetts. I'm Miles Grossman alongside my partner Chris Persiain and Chris. UMass ahead 51 to 49, just seven minutes and 37 seconds to play in what's been a real battle here in the Atlantic 10. UMass missing a couple key rotational guards, Keon Thompson and Robert Davis Jr., both announced as out 
with undisclosed injuries. And of course, with the 8-10 tournament around the corner, really you have to assume those injuries might just be maintenance. But Jalen Curry, the freshman, has been thrusted into a much larger position and he's held his own. He's committed a couple silly fouls, but he's held his own for the UMass Minutemen. And in the second half, the Minutemen have been the slightly more polished group and now they lead by a pair. Miles, 100%. You take a look at the shooting in the second half and it's just a little bit different here than the first half. Neither team doing great, but there is a key difference, right? Fordham and UMass have each made seven shots. Cool. UMass has taken 16, so making seven, well, that's 40%. Fordham's taken 22, meaning they're at about 35%. They're getting more shots up. That's a good sign. The problem, they're not doing enough with them. They need to keep getting offensive rebounds. So 7.37 to play. UMass 51, Fordham 49 here on the road. They're gonna pull the upset against the Minutemen. Here's Cohen at the top of the circle, swings it over to Diggins. Diggins back to Cohen, little two-man game at the top of the key. Now Diggins hesitates. The UConn transfer angles right to left on Antrell Charlton, pulls up on the floater, and he gets it to go. A tough floater, and Rasul Diggins makes it a 53-49 to UMass lead. The first two-possession game in a long time. That was a floater from right inside the three-point line. It's like he hit the <laughs> wrong button on his controller there, but it worked. Charlton chest pass up top for Ahmad Dean. Dean on the lefty slot over to Richardson. Richardson hesitates. Probes and bounces in high post for Kyle Rose. Rose thought about the three and decides to step into it, and he's no good. Off the left side of the iron, Ramad Dean rises for it and draws contact. And a little bit of infighting here between Ramad Dean and Kyle Rose. Got to keep an eye on that, but UMass, a four-point advantage, 53-49, to 6.52 to play. Ramad Dean draws the contact down low, and with the Fordham Rams in the bonus, it'll be a one-and-one one here for Ramad Dean, who's become a regular starter here in just his sophomore year. Well, Miles, the infighting you mentioned there was just Dean trying to help Rose out. And Dean, good on the first of two free throws, brings Fordham back within his sole possession of 53 to 50, 652 to play. As you saw Dean try to tell Rose, hey, keep your eyes up. I'm trying to get you the basketball. You're our guy. I want to find you. Dean, not necessarily a playmaker himself, maybe not Rose's fault, but hey, you got to make that triangle with your hands and be ready for a pass, right? So Dean at the free throw line, rattles around and out on the second. The UMass lead will hold at 53 to 50, 6.45 to play. It's UMass basketball here in their home whites. Jaden Jinge, one of the rotational freshmen, swings it up top for Curry, another freshman. Back to Dickens, the UConn transfer. Right corner now, Jinge. Jinge dumps it down low for Matt Cross. Matt Cross skips through the lane and draws contact. This will be the reach on Ramad Dean. Frank Martin claps his hands. He likes the aggression, but a clock stoppage with 6.29 to play. And a foul on the floor, and now it'll be a one and one here for Cross. Heads to the free throw line, and now UMass in the bonus for the final 629. Miles, you've been talking all season about how the Rams are going to their senior leaders here. And Matt Cross good on the first of two. 54 to 50 is the UMass advantage now. One more coming for Cross. I want to highlight a couple of minute counts here. Elijah Gray has played two this entire game, I think. He might not get back in after some first half defensive blunders. And you also look at Jameer Tripp who started the game. He's played 18 minutes. I haven't seen him out here in a little bit in the second half. That's a good point. The young guys in Joshua, excuse me, in Jameer Tripp not coming in here. But a uh, made free throw makes it 55 to 50. You mask the lead here, 6.20 to play. It's Abdu Sibila at the top of the circle. He'll kick it over to Antrell Charlton. Charlton pulls up for 15, and he's no good. Off the right side of the iron, Ramad Dean clears the offensive board, kicks it up top for Charlton, and on the second try, Antrell Charlton brings Florida back within two, 55 to 53. The UMass lead, six minutes to play. Charlton needed that one. I told you, he made his first one of the night earlier. Now he's up to two of four, so all of a sudden, 0 of 2 from 3 becomes 2 of 4 after two straight makes for number 24. 5.50 to play. Here's Curry. Swings it over. Left arc for Cross. Gets it over to Jingay. Now down low. Diggins right corner. 3 and he's wide open and he buries it. 58 to 53. Frank Martin raises the right wrist in the air in celebration. And UMass a 5 point advantage with 5.5 to play. Ramadine is still yelling at Abdu Tambilla for fumbling that defensive coverage. And 
the coach is trying to give Tamilla instructions as well. He's a bit overwhelmed here with UMass's size in the form of Josh Cohen. Medor draws two defenders on the left side mid post. Dribble drive, spins around, gets caught up and finds Ramad Dean. Left perimeter, here's Ramad Dean. Dribble drive, one on one on cross. Gets caught under the basket and last touch will be Matt Cross. Tapped out of play, stays here with the Fordham Rams. 5.08 to play, just three seconds to shoot now. Fordham trails by five in need of a bucket here on the road. Just 3.1 seconds on the shot clock. It's got to be Kyle Rose here, Miles. Get him open for three and work from there. If not, you want to see Ramad Dean. So Josh Rivera checks in now for Ramad Dean. Ramad Dean off with 5.08 to play. And the Fordham Rams, the baseline inbound of the basket, and Trail Charlton is the trigger man. Under the basket, waits for a develop, finds Kyle Rose. Rose, left arc three, steps into it, and he's no good short. Offensive rebound, or Ahmad Dean, or pardon me, Jafe Medor this time. Medor probes on the right perimeter, hesitates in on the freshman Curry, dribble drive on the right side of the lane, and dishes back up top. Antrell Charlton with eight seconds to shoot. Charlton, top of the key three, he'll pop it. No good, well strong there. It's a wrestling match down low Amdu Simbila tied up with Matt Cross and a couple other Minutemen but the possession arrow will send it back UMass's way so they successfully get the stop 444 to play UMass 58 Fordham 53 it's UMass basketball Ramad Dean when he came out last time said to coach Ergo I'm not tired well here he is back at the scorer's table, checking out number 30, Abdu Tsambila. So your five-man lineup is now Medor, Charlton, Rose, and Dean and Rivera down low. A bit of small ball here for the Fordham Rams. You want to see Dean and Rivera attack the basket. You want to see Rose and Charlton get open for three. And you want to see Jaffe Medor be the straw that stirs the drink. <laughs> So Fordham trails by five now, 58 to 53, the UMass lead here at home. Jalen Curry, the freshman guard at 160 pounds, will cross the UMass logo and swing it up top for Jaden Jingay. Jingay over to Curry, Curry the skip pass overhead. He finds his man in Worthy. Worthy to Diggins, Diggins steps into the triple, no good, well short. Antrell Charlton, the rebound ahead to Rose. Rose in transition with the left hand, no good, short. But he will draw contact, so Kyle Rose headed to the free throw line, 4-18 to play Fordham down two possessions 58 to 53 and Kyle Rose back to the free throw line now and it looks like Jalen Curry the freshman is the guilty party that's his fourth of the contest yeah you're gonna see Marquis Worthy check in any second if I had to bet he's been getting minutes today because of Keon Thompson being out and well look at that Miles who's at the scorers table <laughs> Number so 10. Kyle Rose short off the front of the iron. The lead holds for the Minutemen, 58-53. to 53. And Kyle Rose, of course, missed the front end of the one-and-one one earlier. This time around, he'll have an opportunity to salvage something from the trip. But at the moment, 0 of 1 in a big spot. Kyle Rose, the lefty, deeply bends the knees, and he salvages something. He sure does. Brings Fordham back within four on the made free throw, 58 to 54. A little bit of a full court pressure. The freshman worthy swings it over to Matt Cross, left perimeter, back up chop for Jinge. Jaden Jinge, the six foot four freshman, bounces over for Cross at the high post. Cross angles over to the right perimeter and hands off for Diggins. Diggins, two hand overhead pass for Worthy. Worthy kicks it over. Left side, Jinge steps into the three, well short, just grazes the right side of the iron. Antrell Charlton, the rebound ahead to Rose. Rose, left side mid post, kicks it back up top for Rivera. Rivera fakes the three, finds Charlton. Charlton, right corner for Medor. Medor pops the right corner three and well strong there. Matt Cross the rebound, he'll hand off for Diggins and now with 335 UMass says slow things down 58 to 54 the UMass lead with the basketball 328 and ticking here from Amherst Massachusetts Diggins lefty slot chest pass over left corner for Jinge stuck in the corner dribble drive in on the door finds Matt Cross and Matt Cross under the bucket will draw the contact Keith Ergo wanted the travel he won't get the call but with 318 It'll be the Matt Cross free throws on the other side. UMass a commanding lead down the stretch now. 58 to 54 over the Fordham Rams. 3.18 to play. But with that, we're going to take a quick break and send it back to our Rose Hill studios for a scoreboard update with Isabella Terracini. The one-on-one -on -one scoreboard. In NBA news, the Grizzlies face off the Sixers 
from Philly to 72 to 85 with two minutes left in the third. While the Rockets host the Clippers, and with three minutes left in the third, Houston is blasting the Clippers 74 to 63. And the Magic have surpassed their Wizards and taken control 102 to 97 with under four minutes left in the game. Checking back in with A-10s, Richmond had held the Hawks off and won 73 to 66, and the Cyclones and BYU Cougars are in full swing, and the Cyclones are leading them 9 to 4 from Iowa. With with you the one-on-one scoreboard, I'm Isabella Terracini. Just three minutes and 18 seconds left in regulation here from Amherst, Massachusetts on the campus of UMass Amherst, of course. 58 to 54, UMass on top over the Fordham Rams. I'm Miles Grossman alongside Chris Persiani. And Chris, we've really resorted back to that low scoring defensive 8-10 style. Fordham 0 for the last four from the field. And they're pretty cold dating back to the last eight. One of their last eight from the field. And on the other side, UMass hasn't scored in the last two minutes and 23 seconds of basketball time. So while Fordham usually comfortable in these defensive affairs, today they're going to need to land a punch and take that lead. Miles, right now the Fordham Rams are huddling up, trying to come up with a plan of attack for the rest of this game. They know they need to dig deep and get stops. They know they need to score buckets, but how do they actually go about that against this UMass team? Well, let's talk X's and O's. Josh Cohen humbering and lumbering up the court after a big defensive play every time, or if he's got to run around on offense, he really is tired when he's running up the court. He's not super mobile in pick and roll defense. And a pretty amazing scene here at the Mullen Center. We got a standing ovation for a graduate member of the staff, it seems. He's the MC this evening. He was out there trying to get everybody hyped up, coming out of the under four timeout. And they just awarded him with a scholarship. They brought the mascot out. They had a message from Frank Martin. And that's just a wholesome scene here. But he always loved those scholarship moments. So Chris, didn't mean to interrupt, but here we had really the loudest cheer of the day. And it's been a pretty dormant crowd. And I wanted to tell the listeners why it's coming during non-basketball time <laughs> absolutely well when you take a look at the environment here like i said earlier the fans a bit older not too many students and that's why as time has gone on in this one they've woken up a little bit they don't have that youthful energy to be <laughs> jumping up and down like certain shirtless herd members at the rose thrill gymnasium but miles it's going to be getting cohen in pick and roll getting him to leave that paint and sending someone like Charlton or Dean on a straight line drive inside or Timbilla drawing contact inside. Rams are gonna win this game being physical, not trusting the three point shot. So cross good on the first, here's the second. No good off the left side of the iron, but the offensive rebound down low. Jinge gets it, dumps it down low for the cutter and Worthy, the cutting freshman, got smacked to the ground by Abdu Simbila. So 3.13 to play. And another foul down low on the Fordham Rams. Marquee Worthy, the freshman guard, will be headed back to the free throw line. And now rebounding, certainly becoming a more of a glaring issue as this one drowns on 59 to 54. UMass on top, two more free throws coming for the freshman and Marquee Worthy. Yeah, Abdu Tsambilla just picked up his third foul. Miles, not a great sign for Fordham. Yoli Akawovo has not been a solution for them on defense today. And a couple of weird bounces there. No good off the left side of the iron, off the third bounce. Had an awful good chance. The crowd didn't like it. 3.13 to play. One more coming out of the right hand, a worthy at the free throw line. No good off the right side of the iron. The lead will hold it 59 to 54 for UMass. Abdu Simbila the rebound, dumps it off for Antrell Charlton. And now 3.05 to play. Charlton to push into the offensive set on the UMass logo. Finds Kyle Rose, dumps it down low for Abdu, and he's blocked from behind. But he certainly fouled from behind as well. Josh Cohen slapped the left wrist of Abdu on the dunk attempt from behind. And now two free throws coming for the senior, Abdu Simbila. Four fouls on Josh Cohen, Miles. Really, really important to take a look at at this juncture in the game. He's the most important player for the Minutemen, and we know that. 
So 2.59 to play, and the star of UMass is in foul trouble. 59 to 54, UMass on top. Abdu Sambila stands at the free throw line and rattles home the first. Fordham back within four now, 59 to 55. And Cohen is being kept out there with those, according to Chris Persian, in four fouls. <laughs> well, the PA announcer said it too. You can't say I've been the only one counting them all game, Miles. It's on the scoreboard, and I think everyone here in the crowd knows it. It just got a little tense. Abdu Simbila, good on the made free throw there. Fordham within three now. 59 to 56. 248 to play. Diggins kicks it up top for the freshman Curry. Back to Diggins. The UConn transfer at the top of the circle. Bounces down low for Cross. Cross the extra pass for Cohen, and the turnaround is swatted out of play. Last touch, the right hand of Abdu Simbila coming off the block. So with 237 to play. It'll be the baseline inbound for the UMass Minutemen in white. Seven seconds to shoot and a one possession lead. Zimbilla second in the A-10 and 11th in all of NCAA Division I play in blocks per game with 2.4. There's one for him. And Abdu Zimbilla jumping up and down on the baseline. And Abdu Zimbilla looked like he kicked out his left foot and crossed the baseline. So we'll see what the call is. And it looks like they'll give him just the warning here, but... Abdu, of course, told not to cross the timeline on the inbounds play. Jinge onto the basket. The trigger man flips it high and is picked off by Ramon Dean. Dean into the hands of Rose, and the Fordham Rams lose. Here's Abdu in the two-hand slam. In transition, and Fordham trails by a sole point. 59 to 58, UMass the lead in the basketball. 220 and ticking. Curry swings it over right side for Diggins. And UMass now back in the offensive set. Just a one point lead. 213 and ticking. Here's Diggins at the top of the circle. Up top for Curry. Swings it over left side. The extra pass. Matt Cross left side mid post. And he cans it. The mid range J from the mid post and a Matt Cross. And a 61 to 58 UMass lead. A buck 57 to play. Miles, the play before, you see the difference in foot speed between Timbilla and Cohen. Abdu leaking out, but that time a great shot from Cross. Charlton driving kick left corner. Here's Ramad Dean. Probes in on the left corner. Gets caught up. Now rises with 13 and kicks it back right side for Will Richardson. Back up top for Rose. Rose loses the dribble. Nobody responsible for it, but the Fordham Rams regain. Rose, right corner. Off the scrum. Air balls it strong into the hands of Matt Cross. UMass says take our time a minute 23 and ticking it's UMass basketball and a 61 to 58 lead here at home and Jinge will swing it up top for Diggins Diggins over to Curry left side for court Curry the freshman over to Matt Cross wide open left side triple and he buries it Keith Thurgo needs the timeout 64 to 58 and Chris that might have just done it right there a minute seven to play Diggins and Cross and Charlton getting into it. Some words now, but both sides will head to the huddle with a buck seven to play. And Matt Cross may have just found the dagger. Miles, Matt Cross is someone who had 26 points last time out for this team. 0 of 2 from three point land, though, in that game. 9 of 13 from the floor, but missed both of his three point looks now in today's game. He's made two three-pointers, and that is all the Minutemen need because they're up 64-58 to 58 late in the game. It's tit for tat, back and forth, and Fordham needed a stop. They got that stop. They needed to score. They got that score, but UMass kept responding. There was always someone trying to get that last word from the Minutemen, and now you see them get two points in in a row, not literal points, but attacks, and... As a result now, Fordham down by two possessions. And Fordham now slowly but surely turning into an awfully ugly day from the field. 23% from downtown as a team. Six of 26, that is. And now just 34% from the field. 21 of 62. And Chris, the Fordham Rams, of course, held down the UMass Minutemen early on defensively. It looks like it was going to be that classic defensive struggle that the Fordham Rams are comfortable playing but it is simply hard to win in the A-10 with 23 from downtown and 34% from the field as a team. Kyle Rose, of course, sort of continues the offensive onslaught with 12 points, but Abdu Sambila and Antrell Charlton, the veterans right behind them, 
really the offense never got going at an efficient clip tonight. Yeah, Rose, Charlton, and Zimbilla all with 12 points right now, so they're tied for the team high, but there's three players on UMass that have scored more than them. Matt Cross has 13, Josh Cohen has 19, and Rasul Diggins, because he's four of nine from three, has 16 points. UMass is just outdoing Fordham right now, and you take a look at the three-point shooting in both halves, well, four of 10, whereas UMass in the first half, four of 13 for Fordham. Now here in the second half, it's a different story. UMass, three of nine, they'll take that. Fordham, two of 13, they will not. So with a minute seven to play, it's comeback time here on the road for the Fordham Rams, 64 to 58. The UMass on top by a couple possessions. And we had a couple dagger threes in this second half. One out of Cullen, one out of Cross, as you said. But they have really taken the air out of the Fordham Rams sails. And now with just a minute seven to play, it's major comeback time for the Fordham Rams in their final road contest of the season. Yeah, you thought after the up and down start for Timbilla that he had kind of written the end of this game story here. The hero with the block, the leak out in transition, and then all of a sudden, Fordham's down six. What happened? And Charlton across the timeline, a minute four to play. Charlton, left elbow, kicks it up top for Rose. Rose, top of the key, three, and he rattles it home. A clutch shot out of the left hand of Kyle Rose. And Fordham within just three points now, under a minute to play, 59.1 seconds to be exact. But UMass only up by three now, 64 to 61. And it's a one possession game, Chris, a stop and a score, it's comeback time here in Amherst. Oh, absolutely, Miles, and Kyle Rose, very on brand today from the three-point line. He shoots 41% for the season after the great performance in Philadelphia. Now today, he's four of 10, exactly 40%. That's what Kyle Rose has done this year. He's making 41% of his five three-point attempts per game, but if you look in conference play, he's probably taking about eight a game He's increased the volume. He's increased the percentage. That's what a leader does. They step up when their team needs them. Even if no one in the world thought they could be a real number one option, well, they've got something to show you. Kyle Rose here now, the Fordham team leader in points with 15. 4 of 14 from the floor. Let's see him bring it on defense. So it's UMass basketball pushing right to left. It's Curry on Will Richardson. The one-man full court pressure. 50 seconds to play. 20 seconds to shoot. UMass a three-point advantage and the basketball. Matt Cross, top of the circle, swings over right side for Diggins. Diggins probes with 10 to shoot and finds Jinge. Jinge, the freshman, dribble drive on the 8-10 logo, gets caught up, draws three defenders and kicks it out for Curry. Curry back to Jinge, two seconds to shoot. Jinge, the floater, no good, but he draws the contact as the shot clock expires. And Keith Ergo just can't believe it. 28.1 seconds to play and quite literally as the shot clock expired the right hand rose and a jinge and just said drew check it. the contact and now it uh, looks like one referee is at the monitor everybody else lined up for the free throws but of course we do have our near side referee looking to make sure if he got the contact off Excuse me, he got the shot off before the clock dwindled. And they say the shot and the foul were all before the shot clock expired. So it is free throws for Jaden Jinge. In and out there on the first. So the lead will hold at 64 to 61. 28.1 seconds to play. Keith Ergo still doesn't like the call. Josh Cohen to the bench, Miles, in favor of Daniel Hank and Sanford. That's interesting. Cohen still has just the four fouls, not five yet, but looks like they're preparing to play that other side of the ball. You must be thinking NBA rules. Of course, five is a foul out at this level. In and out there on the free throw, so the lead will hold. 64 to 61. Charlton to push left to right here. Antrell Charlton angles his way to the left side perimeter, kicks it up for Kyle Rose. 16 seconds to play. Rose back to Charlton. The Rams got to get a shot off here. Antrell Charlton, 10 to play. Down low for Abdu, and he's wide open for the two-hand slam. Flushes it home, and Fordham within one now. 64 to 63, 8.6 seconds to play. It will be UMass basketball. Keith Thurgo whistles for the timeout. Both sides to the huddle. And now Fordham force 
to force a turnover here if they want to win this ball game. Chris is going to very quickly become must foul time if UMass is able to inbound this basketball. Yeah, Miles, I'm trying to get a read on the Fordham huddle here. It's tense. It's almost awkward. I mean, they know what kind of situation they're in right now. This is very real. There are 8.6 seconds left on that clock, and when those are over, well, they need to be winning if they want a chance at that single buy. Of course, they're not done for the year if that isn't the case, if they don't win this one. But just look at this Fordham huddle, Miles, and when – you and I are sitting here so close to it, we can kind of get a feel. Sometimes they're very energetic. Sometimes, even if they're losing, they're motivational towards each other. Right now, they're being great listeners to head coach Keith Ergo. Everyone's dialed in, picking up every word that that man is saying. And you can see the starters engaging with him. Ramad Dean challenging him, saying, hey, wait, hold on. What about this? This is a team that knows they've got to come out playing desperate right now. That's why you try to get a read on that late game huddle. And interesting, uh, around the 8-10, the Fordham Rams are really fighting for that single by, as you said, Chris. They're really fighting for it with George Mason. And we can safely say George Mason rolled over Rhode Island tonight, 69-51. to So the Fordham Rams would, of course, have to win tonight and win against Rhode Island on Saturday. But now that it's official and George Mason has won tonight, if the Fordham Rams were to lose, they would officially be eliminated from by contention, of course, doesn't mean their season is over. They'll still be full participants in the Atlantic 10 tournament if they lose tonight. They'll just have to play on Tuesday. Matt Cross inbounds. He's immediately fouled in the backcourt, and that'll stop the clock with 7.4 seconds to play. Antrell Charlton, or excuse me, Ramad Dean will be the guilty party this time around. That'll send Matt Cross all the way over to the other free throw line. UMass, a 64-63 lead with... Two shots coming now for Matt Cross, the senior forward out of Brewster Academy. He's on his third stop, Chris. UMass, U Miami, and Louisville as Keith Thurgo is complaining about a timeout issue. They are near side scorekeeper says the Florida Rams are out of timeouts, and Keith Thurgo says, I surely have one. And now he gets our near side referee to confirm with the scorekeeper and I don't mean to point any fingers but it, uh, the scorekeeper on the near side is a is an aging gentleman <laughs> oh man and Keith Thurgo has been claiming this miscount has been brewing for a long time and now Keith Thurgo still giving an earful to our near side referee the made free throw falls with 66 to 63 Big the UMass advantage, 7.4 seconds. And now Trey Moore in the director of basketball operations trying to sort everything out here courtside at the Mullen Center. And now it looks like Keith Thurgo has, in a way, won the challenge. He's gotten our near side referee to at least review the foul count. But nevertheless, the Fordham Rams trail by just three points with 7.4 seconds to play. It will be Fordham basketball and a chance to tie. Miles, you know Trey Morton, like you said, the director of basketball operations, knows exactly when Fordham called each of their timeouts. He's got the count right there on his notepad, and it does not line up with what the scorekeeper is saying, that Fordham has no timeouts left. Morton went over after Ergo to present a more expanded form of the case, but now he's working with RSID Joe DeBerry trying to track down how many total timeouts have been called. We can hear them doing the math right next to us. Fordham has a timeout left. They, they are not wrong about this, in my opinion, of course. And it's one of those things that's real tough to overturn. Of course, each bench keeps track of their timeouts as well as the scorekeeper. But it's tough to overturn the scorekeeper's ruling. And now 7.4 seconds to play here. A chaotic scene courtside at the Mullen Center here in Amherst, Massachusetts. UMass the lead still 66 to 63. Keith Ergo trying to figure out the timeout situation. Well, great on him for being like, hey, I have a timeout left and instantly getting the attention of all of his assistants, everyone here at the scorer's table. Ergo is really sure that he had that timeout left. He wanted to make sure things were right because if you're the Fordham Rams and you're playing for such an important part of your season, you cannot have something like this be miscounted 
the referees now doing the D word. They're deliberating over there at the <laughs> mid table. And the Fordham Rams have confirmed via Joe DeBerry that they have one timeout left. So we're going to see what happens here. But Miles, just in case, I don't want to say the O word, but in case that happens and there's some extra basketball here, Ramad Dean picked up his fourth foul a little bit earlier. We know also that Cohen. <laughs> we know that Cohen has four, and we know that Jalen Curry on the other side has four. So near side referee still at the scores table. Now it is official that UMass has one timeout and the Fordham Rams have one timeout. So each party official one timeout. According to our near side referee, it's Fordham basketball. They trail by three, 7.4 seconds to play, but they will have to go the distance, or at least now with the timeout, they'll cross the timeline and probably call that timeout, it's safe to assume, and then set things up out the timeout. But the Fordham Rams trail by three, 7.4 seconds to play with the basketball. Keith Ergo just walked over to that elderly scorekeeper you mentioned earlier, gave him a handshake and said, thank you for what you're doing. I didn't mean to be rude. I just knew I had a timeout. So the issue is corrected. Six seconds to play. Jafe Medor is intentionally fouled in the backcourt. The freshman, Jaden Jinge, gets in there. So it's a real good old-fashioned up three foul intentionally situation. John Rostein and just John Rostein fans across Twitter will appreciate that move by Frank Martin. <laughs> but it is 66 to 63 and the Fordham Rams trail by three. And Jafe Medor will head to the free throw line for two free throws with 4.6 seconds to play. And Jafe Medor, 71.7% from the charity stripe this year, deeply bends the knees. The righty free throw is around and down. And Fordham now just within two, 66 to 64. And it looks like now one of the two timeouts will be used. It's Fordham's. And it will be Fordham. So Keith Thurgo uses his final timeout now with 4.6 seconds to play. A timeout that he fought very hard for. And he successfully <laughs> wins it. And now it is to, to clarify the situation here on the near side. The elderly scorekeeper has gotten some handshakes from all referees and all coaches involved. I mean, we all make human errors. I'm a broadcaster. I make mistakes. Coaches make mistakes. Scorekeepers make mistakes. It's just unfortunate that it came in such a pivotal moment but of course it was able to be corrected at the end of the day UMass the lead 66 to 64 and now it will be one more free throw coming for Jafe Medor at the charity strike Miles you try to limit outside factors from the beginning of the season throughout the season after the season you keep it about yourselves coach Ergo's done a good job of that all year saying they want to be the best team they can be at the end of the season but here in a late game crunch time scenario for the whole coaching staff to be focused on getting a timeout that was rightfully theirs is a tough scenario for Fordham. They're a little frazzled now. They're thrown off a bit. 66 to 64 and Jafe Medor needs to hit this free throw. It's a lot of pressure on number zero. 4.6 seconds to play. Jafe Medor trails by two at the free throw line. The intentional miss off the right side of the iron. The rebound pulled down by Hank in Stanford. And they'll say, what's the call Out here? It should be Fordham basketball. Our near sign referees will head to the monitor. And it looked like the ball was pulled down by the sophomore forward, Daniel Hank in Stanford. It sure was. Pulled down by Hank in Stanford, and he lost it under the basket. At the moment, the call is last touch UMass with 2.5 seconds to play. And the Fordham Rams, of course, trail by two. And it's not necessarily Fordham Ram basketball yet. That was, of course, the call on the court. But we got three referees deliberating at our near side monitor, Chris. You love to see it. 2.5 seconds to play. The Fordham Rams trail by a pair. And there's obviously a chance they secure the basketball at this moment. Well, Miles, I'm going to ask you the question I'm about to answer. <laughs> do the Fordham Rams go for three and for the win? Or do they go and play for overtime? Here's my answer. I want yours. I think they should drive inside. I said it earlier. Do not trust the three-point shot. Do not sign your life away on that 360 deal to the three-pointer. It's up and down like a mountain range, Miles, and that is why the Rams should trust who they are, a mud wrestling team that they try to be and just show this crowd on the road that they're gonna go and 
give this one one more shot and that O word I mentioned earlier. I think you drive inside, you go for an easy two, always the possibility of an and one, and there's the call, Miles, tell us about it. It will be Fornham basketball here with 2.5 seconds to play. We'll actually add six tenths of a second, believe it or not, lifetime in the game of basketball. 3.1 seconds is the new total on the clock. The Fordham Rams will have another shot. They trail by two, 66 to 64, the UMass advantage. Antrell Charlton will be the trigger man under the basket in the offensive set. Fordham trails 66 to 64. Charlton looking for the game winner or the game tying bucket here. It all comes down to this for Antrell Charlton and the Fordham Rams in the offensive half from UMass. 3.1 seconds. Antrell Charlton gets the okay from the referee under the basket. Charlton the trigger man, but dumps it inside. Rose, right corner three, no good. Strong off the left side of the iron, and Kyle Rose had an opportunity to win it. No good, strong off the left iron, and Keith Ergo immediately rushes over to console Kyle Rose. Kyle Rose, the hero of the Fordham Rams season, was wide open in the right corner. The Rams got the look they wanted, and Fordham could not capitalize. They fall on the road 66 to 64 at UMass. And Chris, it's official, they're playing on day one of the Atlantic 10 tournament. The Fordham Rams are unable to secure the single buy here in 2024. And it's Tuesday, March 12th. They still got senior day ahead of them, but their fate will be decided on day one at Barclays. Miles, I really think it's interesting to see these two teams in their handshake line right now. Frank Martin with some extra props for Jameer Tripp, the freshman, as he made his way over. And that's because Tripp had a really nice game today, despite being a neophyte here in the collegiate game. He didn't play a lot of minutes late, and that was because of his inexperience. The Rams needed trusty defensive hands. But at this juncture of the season, Miles, you got to just take a look at where the Rams can go from here. You don't want to dwell on a loss. Of course, it came down to the final seconds. What do you think about this team's momentum going to what is they showed last season was close to a home game at, in Brooklyn at the eight tenths? Well, at the moment, the Fordham Rams have lost six of the last eight. Sorry. Not too much momentum at the moment, but we're now going to be joined by assistant coach Henry Lowe. Coach, can you hear us okay? Absolutely, Miles, Chris. Thanks for having me. Coach, thank you so much for your time. And obviously a tough loss. You're going up against a legend in this realm, Frank Martin. A lot of respect Keith Ergo has for UMass and this program. A tough loss. You get the look you wanted for the final shot. Just what was kind of the difference maker down the stretch against a really good UMass team? You know, they got veterans. Coach Martin runs a great program. You know, we have a lot of respect for them, as you guys said. Um, you know, they were, they were they're a tough and nasty team. You know, we tried to match that and, and you know, bring the intensity as well ourselves. I think, you know, we had a, on the road a chance to win at the end, um, and, you know, it didn't go our way. But, you know, happy how our guys executed. Um, you know, can't ask for much more. Coach, you're getting to a point at the end of the season where this team's leaders have kind of stood up and raised their hands and shown themselves. Kyle Rose, someone who started putting the ball on the floor, creating offense, and we've gone back and forth about that all year. For him today – to step up and have the performance he did and then at the very end miss that final shot we saw Keith Ergo run over to him and say hey you're my guy it's all good talk about being a coach and working with players who are so good but are obviously prone to moments like that Kyle's our guy man I mean three years the improvement that he's shown you know the commitment the work ethic talk about just having stamina as a player you know a long-term vision for himself you know in our program um yeah can't, can't say enough about him and I think yeah, he's made a lot of threes over the last four games, right? Yeah, of course, it's uh, that's how it goes. You know, last one at the end, you know, I mean, he misses it, but I think couldn't have been a better executed play. And I think, you know, just lucky to have the chance to, on the road against a great team, a great program, be able to, um, you know, have a shot. You know, like that, you know? And, Coach, this is the final road game of the year. Of course, still got Barclays, but you'll travel home for the final regular season game of the year. It's senior day for a, a pretty special class. Antrell Charlton, Kyle Rose, of course, of the transfers as well, Jafay Medor, Yoli as well, Albie Evans. That's a special group of seniors. Is there anything you look forward to most about this upcoming Saturday? 
Um, you know, just get another opportunity with those guys to compete. And you know, I think that's what they would probably say as well. You know, I think you know, they're, they're guys that are all in. They're all about Florida basketball, all about their teammates, all about their coaches. Um, you know, can't say enough about their character. And, uh, you know, we're sad to see them go, you know, but we're going to compete hard till the end. You know, we'll see what happens uh, in the tournament. Coach, one last one for you here. As Miles said, senior day and then the A-10s coming up. Coach Urko has said all year, you guys, are, you can say it with me if you want, trying to be the best, best team we can be by the season, end of the season. Yes, right? So talk to me about evaluating that at this point. What's your feeling like? Just how do you trust this team going into the A-10s? To, to what extent, not saying how like how, but to what extent do you see the growth and have faith in them? You know, we have a ton, we have a ton of faith in them. We got a ton of trust. I think they're got these guys have been working since since June one. You know, uh, I think anytime you spend that much time grinding, competing every day, you know, I think we have been achieving our like results wise. You know, maybe we haven't got as, as many wins in the win column that we want. You know, but I think as far as our approach, our determination to achieve that goal, you know, I think we still got hopefully a lot of season left. You know, mm. but we'll uh, we'll evaluate that at the end of the year. But I think. You know, we've done a great job of improving, you know, continuing to get our young guys some experience, uh, you know, even playing in big games, big moments like this against tough, experienced guys for a guy like Jameer Tripp, Josh Rivera, still a sophomore, Will Richardson, still a sophomore, Ramad Dean, you know, can't say enough about him, Ma massive plays, that dive he had at half court, you know, that's what our program's all about, to give us a chance to have a shot in the corner. Again, another one that didn't go our way, but uh, the fact that Ramad was able to do that and play like he did, uh, you know, it's pretty monstrous, and he's got a bright future. So we're proud of our guys, proud of our team. And uh, you know, looking forward to the end of the season. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Thank really you appreciate your time. Win or loss. So that was head assistant coach Henry Lowe, as always, joining us post-broadcast. And UMass will take this one 66-64. to And, Chris, the road portion of the year is over. The Fordham Rams will now return home on Saturday, wrap things up senior day with Rhode Island in a game that, of course, matters for creating momentum but does not matter for seeding. I think going into that one, it'll be a memorable day for many Fordham Rams careers. Kyle Rose will make his 139th appearance as a Fordham Ram and his final appearance on Rose Hill. The Fordham season is winding down here, but really it's all about preparing for the Atlantic 10 tournament. Miles, you said it a little bit earlier when talking about how everyone's human, that you're a broadcaster. Well, you're a student, too, and you go to Fordham University, obviously. In my time at Fordham, there's no one that defines Fordham basketball more than Kyle Rose. Regardless of which stars have come in and seen the exit door as well, Chuba Ohams Jr. to Khalid Moore, Kyle Rose has been there. And now he's tasked with leading a Fordham Rams team full of inexperienced, talented dedicated and persistent players into an a10 tournament where as we've said all season anyone can beat anyone you have your heavyweights those guys identify themselves but it's a lot of scrappy teams out there they're going to be that are going to be fighting to make a run of their own the fordham rams able to throw their hat in the ring we'll see how strong that throw is so Kyle Rose finishes with 15 points, but he misses an open right corner three for the game winner at the buzzer in UMass. And Massachusetts will take this one 66 to 64 over your Fordham Rams. He's been Chris Persiani. And Chris, that's going to do it for our season on the road together. It's been such a pleasure working with you. So much love for you, my man. But here in UMass, we should wrap things up, get it back to the studio. The Fordham Rams will now fall to 12 and 18, 6 and 11 in Atlantic 10 play. They've now lost six of their last eight and do not carry all that much momentum into the end of the year. But that's going to do it here in Western Massachusetts. He's been Chris Persiani. I am Miles Grossman, and we're going to send it back to the Rose Hill Studios for our wonderful crew with the postgame show, Jack. Warner and Isabella Terracini. The one on one post game report. A heartbreaker for the Fordham Rams over in Amherst, Massachusetts as they fall in their road finale this year by a final score of 66 to 64. Welcome into the one-on-one -on -one post game report. I am Jack Warner, joined alongside once again by Isabella Terracini. 
And you saw some excitement there as the game closed out. You saw an opportunity for a clutch, likely game-winning three-point shot from Kyle Rose, who has been the heart and soul of this Fordham team this season, especially on the offensive side of things, You know, coming off of last season being the A-10 co-defensive player of the year. But this year, the offensive firepower that has come from Kyle Rose has been honestly unlike anything I've seen in my time at this school watching this basketball team and I wanted to just before we hop into the game real quick Kyle Rose misses that three-pointer in a huge spot you can tell he's visibly upset he's animated he's you know he's he's heartbroken that he doesn't make the shot Keith Ergo runs right over to him and consoles him and says you know basically I would have to imagine you know gives him some warm wishes and says listen you've been our guy you can't you know brush that one off that's not on you and I'm going to be honest with you. I just want to give a quick shout out to Kyle Rose. I know we're we're leading into this, you know, to be put in that position. It was mentioned during post game just now as you just heard. He's made a lot of threes lately. It was he was bound to miss one at some point. Obviously that's a tough spot to miss a game winning three pointer in a tight matchup like this one, especially with a single buy in the A10 tournament on the line. But there's a reason why that man had the ball in his hands to take the final shot. And it's because he's been the heart and soul of this Fordham offensive unit for several games now. I think you're so right. I mean, he really does prove himself to be worthy of a court placement. And he's like, he's definitely strong. He's definitely gritty. He definitely knows what he's doing when the ball gets into his hands. And you know what? Sometimes they make mistakes. And it's all about just having the passion and having the opportunity to just like throw the ball and you know what if it goes in it goes in if it doesn't it doesn't and it's like for him to feel that bad about it and I know there was a lot on the line but I mean it shows character and it shows character that like this this is an actual team this is a team that knows how to play together and it's shown through more emotions and Keith Ergo especially running over to him right away before even the handshake line to console him right away that's a fa- that's the fatherly role that you like to see you know head coaches play when they when they understand the emotions and the raw grind that their players leave out on the court night in and night out especially like I said with a player who has left it all out there like Kyle Rose now Kyle Rose was the leading scorer tonight yet again for the Fordham Rams he goes 15 points tonight on 5 of 15 shooting 4 of 11 from three-point land now your three lead scorers for the Fordham Rams Kyle Rose Entrell Charlton with 12 points Abdu Simbila with 14 points of his own and I think the story of the game when it came down to it, I don't think that for a second that Fordham was brutally outmatched in this game. I mean, you look Absolutely at it, not. Fordham, it came down to, like I said, missing an opportunity very late for a game-winning dagger of a three-point shot. I think what it, all it came down to was UMass just capitalizing on the things that Fordham did not even if it was minimal. Down the stretch, UMass made their shots when they needed to. They had a better day from the field. And basically, the team that had the consistency on the offensive side of the ball, because this was a defensive battle for most of the beginning of this game, but you did see on both sides defense start to waver a little bit in the second half. It did come down to the team that was able to capitalize on their shots was the team that won the game. Could not have put it better myself. It was if... The ball was in the right spot at the right time. They were going to shoot it, and they were going to capitalize on that. And for Fordham to just be that close throughout the entire game, it was a back and forth throughout the game. And that shows a lot of grit, a lot of power, a lot of value put into this team. And you know what? For, I mean, there's not much else you could say. It was just, it was a missed opportunity, and it's, it's okay. And this is a, it's a, it's a hard stat sheet to look at. A four point I mean a, excuse me, a two point loss, a sixty six to sixty four loss where you see Fordham go eleven of nineteen from the free throw line. Just imagine I know this hasn't been the strongest free throw shooting team this season, but just imagine for one second they get two of those misses back. This is a tie game. If they get three of those misses back, this is a win by one point. So like I said, it's just the it's the little things. UMass was able to capitalize on the little things. You had Matt Cross, who hit an absolute dagger of a three-pointer right around the 107 mark to put UMass up by six points. That really dug the hole that Fordham had to dig themselves out of, and unfortunately were not able to with that final attempt at a game-winning shot. You had Rasul Diggins with 16 points. Josh Cohen with 19 points. He had a phenomenal night tonight. So you can see... 
where it just came down to who was able to put the ball in the basket. For, you know, UMass's leading scores outscored Fordham's leading scores. UMass shot better from the field. UMass shot better from the free throw line. Those things add up. No matter what happens preceding them, no matter how the first half looks, those things add up. But I do think the most important thing to keep in mind with this game, and I think Miles and Chris touched on it perfectly in the conclusion to their broadcast, was this is not the first tough loss we've seen Fordham have to endure this season. There's been a lot of close ones. There's been some upsets. There's, you know, you can even think back to probably the most painful loss of the year. Actually, I think this one's probably the most painful loss of the year, if I'm being honest. But in the non-conference schedule, I mentioned it, that NJIT loss, you know, there's been tough losses this year. And they've kept coming back and they've kept trying to give a complete effort. And I just mentioned to you that it came down to little things. It came down to stuff like missed free throws. It came down to shots in transition that if a few more fall, Fordham wins this game. That has to be processed the right way heading into the A-10 tournament. Forget senior senior day this this weekend, which is an important game and it and does need to be taken seriously. But it's March. We're we're this is the final game of the season this weekend, and we've seen it before. The A-10 tournament can be a bloodbath. It's all the it's it's everyone. It's anybody's game, and you you never know who's going to upset who. Fordham has shown it was a tough loss against Dayton. They had a lead late against Dayton on the road. This one came down to the very end against a good UMass team fighting for a double bye. So I think when you look at a tough loss like this one, this one's going to sting. You saw Kyle Rose's emotions. We talked about just missing a shot, even though he's been a stud for the last several games. But I think it's just going to going to be able to come down to remaining to have that belief that it's anyone's tournament come tournament time. This loss doesn't define the season, just like the other losses, the other 17 losses besides this one. And I know that's a little more than you want to see. This hasn't been the greatest Fordham season ever, but this team has continued to show grit. They've continued to have close losses. They've continued to have games decided by just the smallest of things. That energy, that, that frustration that has to foster and that has to, you know, erupt into some energy heading into the A-10 tournament, which I really do think this Fordham team does have the skill to shuffle this tournament up a little bit and, and upset some teams. That's so true. I think any it's anybody's ball game, just like it's anybody's tournament, and if they just put their their mindset in the right spot, they can just absolutely dominate on the court. They can foul less, they can shoot more threes and more free throws, and they could be the team that they honestly imagine themselves to be. It's like if they just put some more some more like energy into into like they're they're on the court time this could be a real potentially like upset team like this could this could this could be awesome a a, a tough loss tonight for sure you know anything that comes down to the wire like that obviously like I mentioned as we headed into this post game report a heartbreaker in Amherst You, you can't chalk it up to anything else especially you know moments like that inbound, like getting that final three-point opportunity, you know, it gets it gets anyone that's watching on their feet, and especially, you know, it kept the players on their toes, so that's a tough way for a game to conclude, but nevertheless, this Saturday, senior day, against Rhode Island, Rose Hill Gym, one o'clock, get to bid Be farewell there. to some very, very significant, you know, upperclassmen pieces of this Fordham men's basketball team who have been contributors since the day they stepped foot on this campus, so there are bright times ahead, but there's still the most important basketball this season has yet to be played, and that's just the mindset that has to that has to ma- they have to maintain is that you know it's it only gets more important and higher stakes with each game that passes. But nevertheless, that is going to just about do it for today's one-on-one post-game report. Your final score from Amherst, Massachusetts, was the UMass Minutemen 66, the Fordham Rams 64. The sports director of WFUV is Bobby Chaffordini. Ralph Barbieri was the man behind the boards holding down radio production, and our engineer was Bradley Byrne. Louis Andrade was on highlights. Special thanks to our fantastic broadcasters, Miles Grossman and Chris Persiana, who had the call tonight. Your Fordham Rams will be back in action, like I just mentioned, in their season finale this Saturday, March 9th at 1 p.m. when they host the Rhode Island Rams for Senior Day. Until next time, for Isabella Terracini on updates, I'm Jack Warner saying so long, and we will see you next time. Fordham Men's Basketball is a production of WFUV Sports.